Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games. And tonight we have a very special guest here. Yeah. It's Giovanna Morales Vargas, as you can yeah. see above her. <laughs> and uh, she is my um, work partner and longtime friend yes. of ours of as ours, well. Of ours, yes, yeah. <laughs> and uh, she's here to interview us about the show, mm -hmm. which is very yeah, exciting. Yeah, I'm really excited to yeah. be here. Thank you for inviting me. You, oh, you too. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, we're trying to get. Uh, Geo here for a long time, and I found a really good reason to do that. Kim, get out of there. Come on. <laughs> Distracted cat. Yeah. He's like, ah, attention on me, please. Yes. Attention on me. I'm the cat. Live in person interview. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so today, while we're doing the interview, of course, we're going to be playing some homebrew games because that's what we do on the show. Yeah. Um, so uh, we'll just have to answer the questions while we play the games. Yes. And there'll be no problem. We talk all the time during the show. Yeah. Uh, but the games we're going to be playing tonight are Block Sudoku, uh, a brand new game for the 2600. Oh, it is a 2600 night. We'll put this up mm -hmm. behind us. There we go. And uh, we're also going to be playing Sweep Shot uh, by SOHL Soul. And also, we're going to be trying to play to the end of Razor's Edge. Let's see if we can get to that, mm. which is the retail copy of Razor's Edge from Brazil. Oh, yes. So that will be fun. We didn't quite make it to the end last time. We got no. really close, but we'll do better this That's time. That's the fighting game, right? That's yes, the, it's yeah. the fighting game Excellent. with the amazing scenery in the background. Yeah, really beautiful. Cool. But before we get into that, I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers who help support the show. Their names are scrolling gently beside Tanya on the screen, virtually. Uh, <laughs> Al Nefer, Archimage, Armscar, Code, Atari 800, XL, Rose, Atari 1974, and Atari Age, Atari Patrick, BR Pocock, Charles Sedani, Mount Charles Whelan, Colonel Lama, DNI, Dan, Daryl 1970, Drexel, Dark Mook, Cows, Great Offender, Drown Trooper, Bonjour Rapper, Johnny WCA, Kaboom, Ra, Kabuto Kenzo, oh, some new names, Carl G, Ken Jennings, Invader, Kveltifer, Lambda Express, Lauren TD, Zed, Mark, Hanna, Smart Space, Hang, Metal Atari, Mick Muse, Mike Saul, Mick Littell, uh, Miss Command, Mr. Zarnold, Mr. Fix, Muddy Funster, Nathan Strom, uh, Neo Media, Nostalgic, Pack Rat, VG Coog, Arantowitz, RC70, Rendered Ghost, Repentless, VG, Ricardo Pim, Six Sweets, Mitty B, Smoke, Spice, Rass, Ramirez, The D Train, Washman, Tiki Dan K, Tim of Legend, Tifos, Trek MD, 2600, X, Ken X. And if you want to support the show, mm -hmm. and uh, just hit subscribe, uh, just like all those people did, and uh, I'll read your name on the show as well. Just like Atari 800 XL Rules, RC70, and Kabuto. Kenzo did just before the show. Thank you so much. So uh, a little intro for who the hell Geo is. Here. <laughs> um, so uh, I met Geo in film school in 2011. Wow. So uh, in January 2011, 12 years. right? Twelve years, almost exactly. Wow. To the day, because wow. we started pretty much right after the holidays. We went to film school, right? We did, yeah. Yeah, and uh, been uh, best friends ever since, mm -hmm. and making amazing films. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> it's been a, it's been a ride. It's been awesome. It's been a ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I thought uh, we would put her good talents to use, mm -hmm. and uh, ask her here to interview us about the show. And we asked you guys to send in a ton of questions that you may have that we've never talked about on the show or you missed on the show. Mm -hmm. And Vitoko starts it off with, does Giovanna like video games? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I used, to play, I used to play a lot of video games uh, of this kind yeah. when I was a little kid. Um, I'm Colombian, so living in Colombia, we didn't have the access that people in North America had to, to the games, but we did. Uh, yeah. uh, my father used to travel a lot for business, um, so he used to just go to countries and just try to pick stuff for us. And mostly mm. what he got us it was like technology stuff, like video games and consoles and all that stuff. So we did play, me and my brother did uh, play a lot of... Uh, like retro games yeah. back in the days for us what in retro mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously i think um, you had a nintendo right it yeah, was and called we family had, system it was yeah we had the family it's uh, it, they, call, they call it in colombia family and it was like the white one yeah white one did, probably had auburn or red 
Um, yeah, so like a res- like a yeah reset eject eject button. exactly yeah because that's it was the uh, Famicom in Japan mm-hmm. so that's probably where you got the name from because it was called oh, the Family right. Computer mm-hmm. right that makes so, total sense so same names Family that was our favorite uh, <laughs> um, kind of like uh, how you call it like uh, console. console like yeah. console to play um, she's an expert at Contra. So. <laughs> I used to love. Con- no, I'm not an expert. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. And I'm terrible at, at <laughs> games, but I I found them re- I like yeah when I was a kid it was it was it was big in our family. So yeah. Yeah. And know that I, I to be honest I don't play that a lot um, now as yeah. an adult, but uh, but you know like with James and Tanya like mm-hmm. we like when I come here and uh, and. And events that James does, and I get yeah. to play them. So yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. We usually have like a, a retro game night once exactly, a year. Exactly, a retro game night. And so I'd bring out all the old video games, and everybody plays them and yeah. tries it on the different systems. So yeah, Geo comes for that. Yeah, yeah. I do every year. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, a little bit of news before we get into the interview. Um, so this was just announced today. Oh. There we go. You said you said naughty, and uh, Sprite immediately meowed. Well, he, know, he knows he's naughty. <laughs> he knows he's naughty. So PRGE has been announced for 2023. We're just starting 2023. I'm sorry, that's okay. And it kind of just happened. Um, I, I when it was announced, I think it was it was posted in the chat. Um, uh, what what the hell is that system called? I always forget the name of it. Um, Discord. And Al said, oh, God, because oh. <laughs> it just finished. And it was It's such a big thing for Al to do every year and prepare for mm-hmm. that he's like, oh, again. But it's in October, October 13th. Thank you so much, Teleprompter312, for resubscribing for three months so far. Thank you. Um, so we're already looking forward to PRGE. 2023? <laughs> It's it's that time. Wow! Yeah. And as you can see by the logo, uh, there looks like they're honoring the Atari Jaguar. Jaguar, yeah, that's true. Which is sitting right in front of us. Yeah. Um, because it's the 30th anniversary of the Atari Jaguar. Okay. 1993, it came exciting. out. Yeah. Oh. So there and might be a Jaguar display or like all the games that came out for it, something like that. Can I recommend good homebrew? <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> for a general answer, that's yeah. a pretty general but question. But thank you for resubscribing. Thank you for resubscribing, Kathy yeah. yeah. Uh That's a very general question. But yeah. yes. And Esther Ramirez, if you attend, we will meet you at the pizza shop again. Yes, yes. that was a very good it pizza It was wonderful shop. meeting you. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, and the next uh, news item is that Altira, uh, the premier emulator for Altira, which is the Atari... Uh, 8-bit slash 5200 emulator. Uh, they just released an update, version 4.10 today. You no, know, not today. On the first, on Sunday. Mm. Um, so some uh, some minor updates. Uh, some more cartridge types they've added in. Uh, more support for cassette loading. Um, additional debugger um, support. Uh, better accuracy for disk reading. Um, some display improvements, HDR support, which is crazy um, for a uh, computer system put out in the 80s that has now as HDR support, but that's good. Um, uh, better emulation of the Pokey, which is great. Uh, better light and pen gun emulation, which is also very good. And improved dark mode, which is, which is the most important feature added because <laughs> dark mode is so much nicer than blaring white in your face. Mm-hmm. Um, so go down though that if you uh, emulate Atari 8-bit stuff. Your mic is much low. Oh, it is. Check, 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 check. Thank you so much. Everybody can now turn down their systems after I've blown their ears out. Yeah, they said the resub sound was so loud relative <laughs> to the... <laughs> oh yeah, because my computer was cranked up as well. Yeah, oh, it's nothing like that. blowing out your audience's ears just as you yes. start. Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> Better. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to start off the first game and get it going and then we'll dive into the questions. Of course. Um, so, 
Yeah. Wakes us up though. Yeah, yeah, that would wake you up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wakey wakey. Yeah. Um, so this first game is uh, Block Sudoku. Block Sudoku. So it's a mix of two games, actually. If you can move down to today's date. Like what is 2023? <laughs> Strange. I had to write 2023 and I screwed it up. Um, a hundred percent of the time today. So. Of course. Yep. Uh, it takes twenty twenty two. It takes about three months. <laughs> to get a, it, it takes. To get used yeah, to it's you. true. Uh, uh, we're NTSC. Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> She's learning. <laughs> <laughs> it's just five years. Five years yeah. of having to be reminded. Yeah. Um, so this is by um, Ola Lisboa. Okay. Four uh, K game. Uh, first game that I know of that they've made. You can download in the Atari Age forums. Here's the first work in progress version of my attempt for a, a block slash Sudoku puzzle named wow. Block Sudoku. It's not an original idea, but yet another variant of the many and popular block Sudoku games out there for mobile devices and online. Um, place the blocks pieces on the board in order to complete Sudoku-ish's lines squares for them to disappear. So you have mm. to either do a line or do a gray oh, nine. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and gain extra points. It should be rather intuitive to play this game. It is not detected when the game is over, but that should be pretty obvious when you're no longer able to place any new pieces. Note your score down and hit game reset to start a new game. Mm -hmm. Easy to play, hard to master. Excellent. Okay. So I picked some games that we don't need a lot of... It's not a lot of action. <laughs> not a lot of discussion mm. so that we can answer the questions nice. today. So there you go. Very easy to figure out. So let's get into it. Okay. So. And also watch there. If anybody has extra questions, um, just type it into the chat. Put it all caps in question. Um, so we'll be looking at the chat for additional questions for people. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So s some of you sent uh, questions for James and Tani here. Yeah. So I have them all here with me and I'm just going to just uh, be the person who asked the questions <laughs> that you sent. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. Yay! Also, questions that I, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I want to know that too, <laughs> you know? Oh, things that uh, Geo doesn't know about us. That's well, cool. like pretty much know everything, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but okay. not these questions. But yeah, like some of them are... are like a lot of the... Uh, all the questions are really cool, so... Uh, but cool. Some of them I'm like, I don't even know that too, so that I've been good for me to find out as well yeah okay let's get uh, right into it uh, the first question is from scrummy uh, the question is for both tanya and james so maybe we can start with tanya okay um well what's your childhood like do you play outside do you build forts uh, <laughs> do you bike and uh, do you ride any bikes where was uh, it like what was my childhood like um oh, that's a good question uh i was a pretty outdoorsy child. I like to ride my bikes a lot and run around the neighborhood. I wasn't a sports related person. I didn't play sports. Uh, I swam. I did dance and singing. I liked musical theater. I liked like arts kind of things and yep. crafting and you went I, to computer camp and I went yeah <laughs> so I had a kind of diverse set of <laughs> interests um my dad got us a Commodore 64 when I was I don't know how what grade that would have been well, at the earliest it was 83 it, it, <laughs> I was probably yeah maybe eight eight is when I remember playing it the most yeah and so that was my first introduction to computing I think was really that and then the computers at school but that was an amazing thing to have it was a, a huge privilege to have that in our home and have yeah. video games to play and um, so I did play video games um, as James was implying he finds this hilarious but uh, our YMCA had summer camps and when when um, like uh, school break um, my my parents signed me up for a summer camp and you got to pick what you did in the morning and the afternoon so in the mornings I did gymnastics and the afternoons I did programming for the Commodore 64 and basic <laughs> computer and, gymnastics and so camp. I always referred to it as going to computer gymnastics camp and I'm like 
I had gymnastics on a computer? <laughs> no, computers gymnastics, and gymnastics in the morning. And so I was doing, I was doing, um, you're not playing. Yeah, it's okay. You can play. <laughs> I'm not even sure what I'm doing, but, um, I, I would do, um, you know, like, uh, cartwheels on the balance beam in the morning. And then we'd be learning how to like change the background colors on the Commodore 64. So <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, yeah. I had a, I had a fun childhood. I would, I wouldn't uh -oh. say it was, uh, was, it was bad. It was a good childhood and, and got to do a lot of things, but I was definitely not a super sports outdoorsy person, but I did like to do stuff. I like to play outside and that kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. that's how I would describe my Cool, cool, cool. Childhood. And um, yeah, what about you, James? <laughs> yeah. Um, it was good. We uh, lived in kind of a very rural suburbs. So mm. there's a lot of farmland. Mm -hmm. um, so I rode my bike everywhere and pretty long distances. Grew up in Langley, BC. Um, mm -hmm. So back then it was not as developed as now. There was like cows to the left and cows to the right. <laughs> Literally. They yeah. were really nice. I'd get to pet them and they'd come up to the fence. And Aww. Yeah. And I would build forts actually. And we'd play outside a lot. Yeah. Um, because I didn't have no cat. Because um, I didn't have a computer till probably 80... 485, which is Commodore 64, I played on my friends' consoles, you know, Atari and Coleco and television, uh, Nintendo, um, Vic 20, um, TI 99 as well, I remember somebody having some Apple computers. I also went to computer camp as well. Yay, and they had Apple camp. computers there. She got the Commodore 64. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, Apples were a lot bigger in BC. I guess Commodore 64s were bigger where you were. No, I wouldn't necessarily say that. Yeah. There were a lot of Apple systems around. Um, but I grew up in Ottawa and there's a fair kind of tech industry in Ottawa growing up and right. a lot of businesses like Nortel was there and Blackberry and so I, I feel like the people I was around there was sort of a lot of influence I guess on, on parents who were working in those industries and then kids would have systems and things like that so um, but uh, yeah anyway yeah um, yeah, that kind of covers an overview. I could <laughs> go forever. Yeah. Uh, but I, I met Darcy uh, yes. in uh, 1986, and yeah. he had um, uh, Why are you TRS being friends 80. for a long time? Long time. Childhood <laughs> friends, him and 36 Darcy. 36 years? Yeah. Wow, that's <laughs> yeah. crazy. That's long really time. good. Yeah. yeah, and then he got a Commodore 64 um, yeah. after. I have to say, it's nice to hear of people who maintain friendships that long. Like, you have been friends with Darcy for a very, very long time. Oh it's hard yeah. to keep friendships. It is. Like, because you move away. Yes. Or, yeah. I mean, or, yeah. You grew, or you grow apart from each other. Yeah, yeah like, just, exactly. Yeah. I mean, he lives on Vancouver Island now, so it's just, I'm able to see him less, but we have a schedule, right? He comes every two weeks, yep. and he comes on the show, and then we hang out afterwards. Yeah. So it's, it's really nice. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really cool. He's so great. Let's get those questions before they go off the screen. The questions on the screen? Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, Miss Command. Oh, okay. Let me just see. Hold on here. Oh, they haven't gone off the screen. No, no. There's more at the top, I think. Uh, No, they're repeated. Oh, okay. I already read those. I already saw them. Uh, okay. How did James and Tanya first meet? Oh. Uh, we, uh, a, a computer AI match. <laughs> Uh, I sort ordered of. her online and she ordered me online. That's true. Yeah. yeah. It was it was through um, computer dating. Not, yeah. you know, not through an app, but... Uh, no apps back then. No. Not no for that app? Anyway. Like, it wasn't an app? Like, oh, no. I guess. No, there no. wasn't. Wow. It was very early stages. It yeah. was 2006 um, yeah. we met. 2006. Yeah. yeah, and I, I moved here from Ontario for work. And, yeah, it's not the easiest to meet people when you move from long distances so yeah so I, I I thought that was a really good way to meet people and James yeah. was actually the second person I met yep oh, if you wow. can believe it she yeah didn't need any more after that no. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on <laughs> I was absolutely perfect and she gave up the search yeah I was That's absolutely right. perfect <laughs> Or good, or, good or, or good enough. Perfection. Or good enough. Yeah. Pa pass passable. <laughs> passable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and uh, yeah, we hit it off immediately. Immediately. Uh, we our first date lasted six hours. Yeah. We. It was supposed to be coffee. coffee. Yeah. And then we went for dinner. 
Yeah. Like, like we were just talking like, so much. Should we go for dinner? Because we're yeah. getting hungry. <laughs> and and I think at the time I had just bought a new computer and I had uh, bought yeah. um, uh, what do you call it? It was uh, a multimedia computer. Yeah, but there's a specific name. It Compact. was like a, a Windows. Oh, uh, Media Center. Media Center computer, which had it had a had a run in the 2000s, like like having a computer that and and I actually had like. Um, an antenna wired through so I could record content yeah, and over the air SD antenna. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, I basically because I had moved and I didn't have any equipment and I didn't have a TV, I just thought I'd use my computer for everything and I remember us talking about that. Oh, I was very impressed. <laughs> and so I impressed him. So I, I think I think that's how I went him over. She's the so. only one I've ever heard of ever heard of that had recorded television over the air on her computer i was like oh my god she, she, she you're knows, just like me yeah, she, she knows tech i won't need to step her through troubleshooting yeah thank you <laughs> which yeah. is great yeah that's so great so yeah. yeah we got off we 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 um got off on the right foot and yeah we've been together ever since so yep. yeah that's that's uh, how we met each other um what other names did you consider for the show oh that's um a good one. i had to dig i found them because i keep everything if you guys didn't know. Yeah. Um, and I have them right here. Uh, one was just zero space page, just by itself. Retro stack, man. Uh, eight bit instruction, eight bit DIY, uh, retro coder, uh, unconditional jump, uh, <laughs> test bit, uh, NOP, N-O-P, uh, homebrew break. How do you like those names? Any of those? Should I should I change it to some of those? Um, <laughs> Too late for that. Yeah, it's a little late now. I've got some branding That's going right. on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh boy, so many questions coming in. <laughs> They're disrupting your like your well, flow. No, that's totally fine. Like, I mean, we need to get these ones. Uh, yeah. Uh, other than video games, what other hobbies, interests, do you like? Well, I'll do mine first because there are zero outside of that. <laughs> um, but I kind of, my hobby turned into my job. Um, both Gio and I make films together. Mm -hmm. And um, before that, I was just having fun filming my friends and putting films together. So that was kind of my hobby. Mm -hmm. And also before this show, I used to do radio shows and live television shows as well. So it kind of merged together my hobbies of video games before this and doing live shows mm -hmm. and emerged into this show, which is great because yeah. then it satiates uh, those those things and puts them together. Yeah, um, um, but I want to I want to ask you to elaborate. I sing too. Yeah. yeah, I want you to elaborate on that because um, you you were part of a collective of people doing online streaming. Yes. In what year? Oh well, this probably impressed people. We're, yeah. we're probably the first podcast internet podcast only ever uh, in 1999 in January 3rd so it's the many year anniversary of me starting that on yeah. this day exactly Wow um, was... and then I was probably the first internet only um, multi-camera TV show in 2003 live broadcasting over the internet yeah that was years before YouTube and multi, multi years before Twitch. Yeah. So did it, did nobody take, appreciated it. Yeah. <laughs> did it take you long to figure out how to even do that? Like without any, like, cause you were the first, like nobody it, else knew how to do that. It took a lot of kind of piecing things together to make it work. It was kind of clunky and kind of janky, but it did work. It was in sync. It was very low resolution because bandwidth was terrible in 2003 of for course. video as you can imagine mm. yeah of course. um but the tools were just there like just mm. barely there mm -hmm. and the tools are what started both of those the streaming for audio streaming um besides real audio which you had to pay lots of money for there was a free one that came out just a month earlier wow then when when we broadcast um the audio one mm -hmm. um, at the radio station and then the one for video came out just a couple months before the video streaming one mm -hmm. and they're both both made by uh, Nullsoft um, mm. which were the makers of Winamp for old school people mm -hmm. they'll remember that so mm -hmm. there you go yeah but I, always, I find that impressive that you were doing that before anyone else was well, doing that the yeah, problem with being 
at the, the forefront. First is nobody appreciates it <laughs> and nobody finds out about it because nobody knows it can even exist. Yeah. It's not like people don't understand it yet, right? Like they're yeah. like, yeah. oh, good, but what is now even that? Now there's a yeah. huge infrastructure for Twitch and there's yeah. millions of people watching it, right? Yeah. Streams yeah. and YouTube and um, streaming audio. It's It's gone from radio stations to just random songs. Mm -hmm. um, but it, 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 it becomes one of those things that now you can you can brag about it and say, I was the I first. Was the first mm -hmm. And yeah. the people go like, wow. Yeah. So there is a time that you can be proud mm -hmm. of, of of that. Yeah. And, and this is now. <laughs> and I shut down the radio station a couple of years ago, but it was the longest continuously running internet radio station ever for 20 years. That's how long it ran. Yeah. And you're like, the internet was around for 20 years? <laughs> Three years ago? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Mm. <laughs> um, for 20 years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have other things, but that well, goes off I, tangent. It, things things <laughs> shift and change over time, but I always thought that was just so incredibly cool that yeah. you kind of worked it out before other people had worked it out, you know, like how to, how to stream and do that kind of thing. Oh, boy. Uh, ahead of the times, James, ahead of the times. Exactly, yeah, as Ramirez. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you asked about my hobbies. Yeah. I don't know. What are my hobbies? This show is my hobby. I consider it my hobby because it's sort of James's f almost a full-time job for you. <laughs> and I get to just come home from work and, 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 and be on the show. Yeah, she doesn't even know what games that we play. Most of the time. And and if I get irritable, it's because no one's shown me the controls yet. So I always get kind of <laughs> mad. Like, how am I supposed to play this game when you haven't told me what the controls are? Um, oh. But this is sort of my hobby, I guess. Um, and back. what else? I like to do a lot of crafting. Yep. You I, do? Art. Yeah. Art. I like to do painting. a lot of crafting and painting. And I just picked up a cricket to make stuff with, which I think is just going to drain my finances, but mm -hmm. that's going to be fun. Um, and I also like to exercise and work out, and I like to, um, I've gotten into, like, um, it's a boxing gym, but it's like heavy bag boxing lately, which I really enjoy. But those are my hobbies. Um, is there, I think someone said, is there, uh, there was a question here too, um, asking how much time a week James spends. <laughs> uh, on ZPH. Um, well, let's just which do is some sort of related to very time quick math. for hobbies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you normally do two shows a week. Yeah. Those are two to three hours each. Yeah. Usually two and a half. So let's say five hours of actual on-air broadcasting. Um, preparing for the show, um, just specifically for the show, I have to make the graphics. I have to promote the show. Um, I have to gather information about the games. If you count like testing the games, conversing with the developers, so I get the latest updates of those games as well. That would be per show probably another three hours per show, mm -hmm. three or four, maybe five sometimes if it's like doing an interview mm -hmm. or even more. Mm -hmm. uh, then on top of that, I keep lists of every single homebrew that comes out as well. Um, so that takes up like an hour a day, probably. Yeah. Um, and then there's little things here and there, you know, I have to fix annoying things in my system that constantly fail. It's like, why is this out of sync? Oh my God. Or upgrade or just do research into new things that are coming out. So I don't know, add that up, whatever that was. <laughs> 20 hours, 25 hours. Oh, at least, at least, at least. probably more than that. And then I Possibly. just do a it week. as a, a week, yeah. 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 And then I just do it as a hobby too. So add that on top of yeah. just just reading stuff and mm -hmm. then watching videos about repairs and mm -hmm. video games coming out and stuff. So that's so. just pretty much a week. It is my <laughs> every waking hour other than making movies. Yeah, then work. Yeah. 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 That's a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get off relatively easy. <laughs> and and that's why I do the show live. Yeah. Because I don't have to edit it afterwards. Yeah. It just goes out and it's just it's fun too to interact with people. Yeah. 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 Okay, uh let's go back to these questions. Maybe I know there's yeah, more skipping. that yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still have them here. But we have a lot there too. Can we go through that? Sure. Um uh question, James, ink any ink or planning? No ink. Uh, you can obviously see Tanya's ink there. Ink. Yeah. Um, I have thought about it and I have one in mind. Um, I don't know if I'll get it. I don't know if it's feasible. I don't know if it makes sense. 
Doesn't um, matter, but uh, when I get it, I'll show you guys. Um, so. He keeps he keep he keeps saying that he keeps been saying that for a long time. Yeah. So I was gonna get it before. So we'll see if it's gonna happen. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm pretty happy with my body. <laughs> <laughs> um, but decorations are nice. But yeah. it's permanent. That's the thing. It's like, what will I like twenty years from now? Mm. Right? Will I still like those things? And I think back twenty years previous, and I'd kick myself if I put anything in my body that I liked twenty years ago. <laughs> That's the issue. You wouldn't be liking it I'd be now. Like, I'd be like, oh, why did I get that? <laughs> but it's, I think it's, it's what everybody fears and initially. That's mm. true. And, 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 With and tattoos. For, I mean. And for some people, it's like a, a map of their history, too. Yeah. It's like, Which I like cool. that, yeah. then yeah. I like that. At that like time, that. if, yeah. 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 Okay. So right. Turn again. Yeah. I died. Uh, can you reset it? Yep. These cats are crazy well, right now. Well, they're treated. Yeah. 291. Okay. So you have to beat that. It's a cool, cool game. Yeah. You uh, can't turn it, though, can you? Can you? No, no, no. no. There's no turning. Uh, and then... Uh, question, what is your oldest homebrew? That kind of leads into another question, so we'll, we'll um, save that one. Okay. Back Let's to go yours. back to this. Number two. <laughs> Number two, yay. <laughs> What's the favorite system you had from childhood? What? So let's go with you. I only had one. Is the Commodore 64. Yeah. That's all I ever had. I didn't have an Atari. I didn't have anything. Like never? Else. Never. Oh, never. I didn't even know that. Um, we weren't, you know, super well off or anything, but uh, my parents got me a Commodore 64, which I treasure above getting a console because you yeah. can program on it. You can yeah. make games. Totally. You can figure out things. Um, you had to learn you know, how to interface with the computer, how to make it do things, how to read off a disc, how to format discs. And it kind of put me on that path to want to learn more about computers rather than just, oh, this is a game, turn it on, then you're playing it. There's no there's no insight you get. It encourage you to continue just yeah, so searching I, for more. Yeah, and so I, I pursued computers as a potential career. Career. So I went to, um, I did very well in, in high school. I finished my computers, grade 12 computers in grade 10. And then I went to get computer, go into computers in university. Um, but uh, that didn't work out. It wasn't quite the right path of computers. And then I, then I went into uh, computers as a career, um, working um, as a manager at a uh, cable company, mm -hmm. uh, internet cable company, internet internet provider, yeah. For for a while, right? For quite a while, yeah. I did that for like fifteen or more years um, between a, a number of companies, and uh, it taught me the uh, how to calmly deal with people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're as great for that. I try. I try. I think. I think. Uh, yeah. I think you. I mean, I worked with James for a long time, and and we work pretty well. But like, I thinking of him as a manager is like you'd be one of the best ones. Because <laughs> I love paperwork. <laughs> and you're you're super. I just say you're super calm. You don't you yeah. don't get into arguments, and you you, yeah. you kind of have to be the bigger person when you're a manager. You, you, you know? do. You have to obviously be calm about things. You have to be have empathy. Professional, yeah. Professional. Have empathy for the other person's point of view. Why they're upset. Mm -hmm. And and then you know work through it. You're like a, a mini therapist for those couple minutes yeah. to deflate the problem and deflate the issue. And people come to you with issues with other coworkers or things oh, yeah. like that. Obviously, right? Yeah, and that's that's important skills to have. Mm -hmm. I mean, people they're, skills. They're good in life, so they transferred well. Absolutely. Um, we already know Tanya had a uh, Commodore 64, but you yes. also had a Nintendo. I had a Nintendo and oh, I had a so Commodore lucky. 64 because um, I had the Commodore 64 for many years before the Nintendo came along. We got Nintendo kind of late in the game. I don't know what my favorite would be. I have fond memories of games on both systems. Um, I love the Commodore 64. Um, Oh, can you? No, I can't rotate the shapes. Uh, I, I love the Commodore 64. I love some Nintendo games. It'd be very hard to pick between them. Oh. I really would. Oh, your favorite? Oh, that's not the question we're answering. Just what did uh, 
what system did you have a childhood? But we, no, those what, were the what two. It, there was also what is your favorite? Yeah, console. My favorite no, no, is, like, yeah, you it answer leads both. into that. Uh, yeah. My favorite is the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Um, yeah, it's it's so limited, it's so old, <laughs> yet people work magic on it. I I had an Atari too. We did have an Atari. What? Yeah, I did it. Did no, it. you've never mentioned that. Yeah, we oh also had God. an Atari. We love that one. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. You probably played River Raid, for some reason. Everybody in the South America loves River Raid. Which one is that? Your little plane, you're flying over a river, and there's things you have to shoot and get fuel. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Everybody, <laughs> everybody in South oh, America we love that one. loves that. I have no idea why. Whenever... It, I guess it just went, they, like, it, it, must we got it there. Game. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, it was, it's like, a very good game. Don't yeah. get me wrong. It's awesome. But, yeah. But anyway, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. No, sorry. no, no. That's it. My favorite is 2600. It's super awesome. I That was the first game system. It might have been the Nintendo, but it was the first major game system I collected for um, in the early 90s when the prices went into the gutter. Mm. <laughs> bought them all. Bought all the cartridges. <laughs> all right. So this question, this question is for James yeah. uh, from Dan Iacovelli. Uh, how did you get into Atari homebrew scene, and what was your first 2600 homebrew game you got? Um, I probably got into the 2600 homebrew scene through emulation. Uh, I remember the first emulator I downloaded was for the NES. It was called Nesticle, and it worked amazingly on really low-end computer systems. And then I probably what I did is I looked around for, oh, a 2600 emulator so that I can play 2600 games. And um, I found maybe it might have been Stella, it might have been some other uh, one. And then I probably <clears throat> was searching for ROMs for it to play the games. And I came across some homebrew and that the homebrew probably didn't uh, come on my radar till the early 2010s maybe. Um, because leading into the next part of that question, I did dig up what my first homebrew that I bought was. Um, nope. It was from the Atari age, of course. Um, Toy, Shop Tr Toy Shop Trouble, Stella's Stocking, Stay Frosty 2, uh, Juno First, and Oystron uh, in 2014. And uh, then we went to PRG in 2015, and I bought some more mm -hmm. uh, homebrew. And I registered for the Atari Age forums in 2013, so it must have been before that that I got into um, homebrew. So probably between 2010 and 2013. Yeah. Perfect. Let's see if we are missing anything from. I think we're good here. Yep. So I can continue okay. with the questions here. Yeah. So all good. Okay. Perfect. So now we have. One that kind of goes related to the to the last one you answered, so I'm gonna yep. gonna ask you this, and this one is for both of you. Mm -hmm. It's crummy. Um, uh, is the person asking the question? Can you name any games that were generally disliked that you learned to love? And also, what was it that allowed you to find enjoyment in that game? Let's go with Tanya. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I would probably go for genres. It's not genres, I'm trying to think, because there were definitely some games, when I got my Commodore 64, I wasn't... People are setting off fireworks outside. The leftover fireworks, yeah. yeah. At least cats that's what going. I hope is going on. Yeah, the cats are on. <laughs> um, it's not good for them. No, it's... Because I can even think of games like Impossible Mission, which I love. Yes. But when I first started playing it, it was so hard, I gave up on it. And, and yeah. there were definitely a few games like that, when, because I got the Commodore 64 quite young, that I wasn't very good at, and I kind of gave up on. And then when I got a little older, I went back and played them, and I was like, oh... I can figure this out now. I can actually like competently win the game. So I, I think like that's my one of my favorite games and it's because yeah. I dedicated the time to it. But when I first played it, I found it incredibly difficult. I know I gave up on it for right. like two years. <laughs> I just I just went, Oh, this it. isn't going going well and I gave up on it and I went back to it. So that's what I think. Oh about. there you go. Yeah. But Tanya is not a fan of anything isometric. No, I do. I am not a Qbert <laughs> fan. I do not like any movements that involve the diagonals. I'm not very good with diagonals for some reason, and I'm not sure if it's like the preciseness of the controllers. I mean, in do the arcade, like it only goes in those directions, so yeah. that does help. I, I just, yeah. Thank you. Yes, thanks for the reminder. And But I haven't suddenly 
started liking them again. So yeah, no, not a fan of isometric games. Yeah, um, I, my my opinion really hasn't changed too much. Um, I I remember it's more like being bad at games, yes. and then playing them on the show, and then learning more about how the game works, and then getting better at it because I know how the game works now. And uh, a very good example is Load Runner, which is sitting right there yeah. on the twenty six hundred. Okay. Um, uh, when I played it on my C sixty four and other systems, I just died immediately. The, I just did not understand how to evade the guards whatsoever. They just came straight for me, and I died. And yeah. I'm like, whoa, what's the point of playing this game? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just dying. But then I, I played it on the 2600, and I'm like, oh, no, this is easy. I, it's a puzzle game rather than I'm going to die action game. Oh, my God. Yeah. How do I get out of this? And the same thing has happened for many, um, many games that we've played on the show mm. that we're almost forced to play because they're on the show and I want to show off the amazing work that the developers do. And okay, we got to play this. We yeah. have to learn how to play properly. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh my God, this is actually an amazing game. <laughs> this is really fun. So you get to see what other people see in the game mm -hmm. and you go, oh, I get why people... Same with Robotron um, 2084. Um, there's a 2600 uh, ga game uh, port made by Champ Games. And it's amazing port. Mm -hmm. But before that, I would just die immediately. Just just be overwhelmed and be dead immediately. You but probably have discovered also like a lot of incredible games like doing, doing this show, right? Oh, so Obviously. many games that I didn't appreciate when Back they then, came yeah. out or when I first played them. And now I completely appreciate them. My, my view on what type of games I like hasn't changed. <laughs> I, I still me. love shooters and platformers, and I still gravitate towards those mm. as well. And those are usually the best, the best ones, the best I can, best ones I demonstrate my skills on on the show. <laughs> um, other genres I do okay, but the platformers and shooters I generally can do a little bit better. And so those are the ones that you feel confident doing. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So we now have a question by Revenge. Yeah. Everybody has. Uh, Pivotal moments in their life where a single decision leads them down a unique path. Was it a particular moment? So this question is for James. Yeah. Uh, that both uh, about the um, zero page from Bruce stream and what are the mirror universe? Well, this is for both of you. <laughs> <laughs> what are the mirror universe James and Tanya doing now instead? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, in my life. It's usually not a single point. There's no pivotal point where things happen like that. Uh, my life, I usually plan out very carefully everything in my life. And I think about them for many years sometimes. Yeah. Building up because Zero Page Homebrew didn't just, oh, I just didn't turn on a system mm -hmm. and then played it. I actually had planned it two years beforehand to do Zero Page Homebrew. I, uh, made a point to start following 2600 homebrew. I modded my 2600 to be RGB. I got a um, video capture devices. I got an upscaler. Um, and I, I just, I, I learned everything about it before I committed to it. And I, I f usually follow that rule in everything uh, that I do. I don't, I don't usually jump into things and go, huh, I wonder if I'm gonna be good at this. I, I make sure that I do it right before I start on something. And I, I know Gio knows this about me <laughs> because it, it, it also applies to like projects that we do. Yeah, because uh, we have like, I think I think you were like that until you started working with me, but that's your personality. But yeah, yeah like then it, and when we do projects together, I kind of have to push him and be like, <laughs> doesn't matter let's give it a try <laughs> we and he's try. like i don't know <laughs> no we shouldn't do it. yes let's do it <laughs> because we have precious little years here right and we want to make sure we do the best things we can during those times so when we do a project um i want to make sure it's an awesome project that's going to be super good that other people are going to like that we're going to like that's going to succeed and usually the ones that we work on or always the ones we work on actually are like top-notch in our opinion anyway 
we'll see if other people think <laughs> that. So far, uh, 100% success rate. Yeah, our, yeah. Our, our first big film together did really well, in our opinion. Mm -hmm. No, it did really well, not in our opinion. <laughs> did really well. It's streaming on a Amazon Prime video, so what more what better can you get, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, so it's I can't really say there's any like, oh, this person approached me and that changed my life or I bought this thing or I discovered this thing. It's that's not usually how it works for me. But if we weren't doing the ZPH stream, I can answer that. What mirror universe, what are James and Tanya doing instead? I would be broadcasting something else. <laughs> I would find something else that I would, because I've been broadcasting since 1999, mm -hmm. pretty much straight. You I've like never not connect been. Connect with communities, right? Create yeah. communities, connect with them. And this is. Love it. This is what I do, do with this show. And yeah, I love it. You will be doing something like that. <laughs> 100%, because that's what I have done for since a long time ago, 20. I don't know how long. Long time, 25 long years. Time. <laughs> uh, I, I like um, being a facilitator for other people's creativity or showing off other people's creativity or helping people, you know, boost up or being a signal boost for people, whether it's um, for video projects or for video games or for people wanting to get into broadcasting or whatever. I, I, I go, okay, where's there a need? to amplify people no matter yeah. what it is and and i seek out a niche just like this one there's still no broadcasts that are dedicated solely to homebrew this is the only one that i know of especially our atari homebrew there might mm -hmm. be other ones that i mm -hmm. don't know of mm -hmm. but i saw a need for it and i'm like you know i i need to make this i i love all this stuff i can broadcast i have a uh, a talent there, mm. and uh, there's people making amazing homebrew that nobody knows about. There needs to be more people knowing about it. So there you go. Absolutely. What would you be doing? You'd be doing something upstairs if this wasn't going on. That's a good question. Be doing your art. I would. I yeah. I I would continue working because I work, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that hasn't changed. Uh, I don't know. I'd fill my time with something else, like more crafting or art or something. I don't know. That's a good question. It's a hard. To, it's hard to say. You don't know what circumstances are going to exist if you haven't followed the path you've been on. So, but sometimes you think yeah. like like sometimes I I would have loved, for example, to be to be in a band to be a musician. Uh, oh yeah, I know that I won't do that because <laughs> I have responsibilities. In this. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. very true. People in bands have to have very little responsibility. Yeah, yeah. tour and do stuff. Yeah, they yeah. just have to be open to. So, do, do you ever think about like something like oh I would like I wish I would have done this like let's move on to the next game actually. okay yeah no uh i mean i loved dance and music when i was young right but i also loved science and math so it was i had like this weird conundrum of yeah. like what i wanted to do um but i always had this sort of anxiety about you know getting a good job and having enough money and i kind of wish i didn't have those pressures because i think i would have pursued something more creative right right but i always felt like oh you know do do the make the choice that's more um reasonable or rational or right, right you know like like so that you can get a good job and so i was kind of very <laughs> motivated by that when i was younger but i think in an alternative universe um if, Ooh, if i mean the opposite just very hadn't worked out for me i i would have definitely gone into something more creative but Okay, yeah. so uh, this game is called Sweep Shot. It's by Mike Losh, um, posted on December 31st. It's a 4K game. He also made Immunity. Okay. And 2048 oh, for okay. BCS. Um, so it says, Welcome to Space Station 48307. Uh, 307 Custodial Cadet. Your first job is to operate the station debris incinerator, which is enhanced with a laser guided ion beam sweeping device to push unwanted objects, including some nasty space varmints, into the incineration zone. Um, there's more story to this, but we've got to get back to that. It's pretty much press the buttons as it sweeps along and push everything into the incinerator. Uh, you'll understand. Okay. It's, it's, it'll make sense. <laughs> And there's things that don't move, and there's things that move. So you have to press the button as it passes over. No, nope, you got to push into the center. What? As it passes over, there you go. You can just do it once, though. Um, you can kind of well, cause it yeah, pretty much once. 
What am I trying to do? Push it into the center? Yeah. So now you've got it lined up. You want to push it up. There you go. Oh, oh that's fun. Oh, yeah. Thank you for subscribing. Metal. Oh, anonymous, anonymous Gifter gave out two. Metal Level just subscribed. I'm guessing that was gifted to them. Thank you so much for the anonymous gift. Okay. Oh. 8-Bit Poet. Thank you so much. Thank you. What is going on? Why is this so hard? It's a hard game. Okay, so now we have a question from Carl G. Okay. Uh, and it's for James about Tanya. <laughs> About Tanya. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did it did it take much convincing to get Tanya involved as a co-host? <laughs> yes, yes, it did. Um, <laughs> if you look back on early shows, uh, it there was no Tanya. It was Darcy. Darcy was there for a and long Erlen. time, and Erlen after a bit there as well. Right. Yeah. right. Um, and some other people that came on for one show, sometimes two shows. Um, but I was trying to find the groove, trying to find, okay, can I do this show by myself? No. <laughs> I knew that yeah. immediately as soon as I did a show by myself. It's hard. Because oh, I bet. you have nothing to bounce off other people. There's nobody yeah. to fill in gaps and you feel like you're just talking to nothing and it just goes away. Even if the other person's not saying anything. It just has a different vibe to it. Mm. And I've always done radio shows with other people. Yeah. We're here. So I think, party time oh, for party kittens. Time for kittens. Cats, 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 cats. <laughs> what? This is so cool. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> yeah, it's party time for kittens. Arena Foot fed the cats some catnip. So they can um, redeem points on the show. Oh. Um, and they give them, and everybody gets to treat the cats once in a while. And this one's for some catnip. There you go, cats. That's adorable. Yeah. <laughs> and it goes, yeah. party time for kittens. Yeah. <laughs> cats, 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 cats. After that song, shots, 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 shots. Oh, shot, shot. right, right, right. I always get that in my hat. <laughs> And in my head is the shot song, it's like cats, 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 She's cats. She sang that cats. before I did this. I don't know why, but that gets stuck in my head as a silly thing, and so that's how it ended up on the show. Yeah. Somebody said like that's not treats, so. No, it's not treats, but they like it. Yeah. They'll get treats in a bit. Okay, so. Oh, right. So uh, you convincing actually, Tanya. Um, Tanya was very hesitant because she's never she'd never done anything like this before, been live. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, she she's played video games forever, so that's not yeah. the problem. It was just being on the show in general, and I can understand the hesitancy for any <laughs> anyone doing this who has never done it before. It's so weird, and so public as well. It is so right? public, and I think you know younger people are really comfortable with being having a completely public profile. Yeah, but I don't. I'm not as comfortable, I think, as some younger people might be if that makes sense right yeah so i wasn't i was very very <laughs> hesitant i was like uh i'll do it every once in a while but i didn't want to do it all the time um yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so it, it, took it took a while you can check the archives i don't know when she did her first show but <gasps> it was it was a little bit in and I think I was like desperate. I was like, ah, oh, Darcy can't be here or something. It's like, can you be what? on the show? Or I don't know what you it was. You kind of convinced me once every two weeks, right? Because Darcy would uh, do it yeah. once a week and Erlen, or sorry, Darcy would do it once every two weeks. Yeah. And Erlen would do it once a week. And you do it once every two weeks. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, and it took a bit. And then <laughs> the pandemic hit and then there was no one else to do it with James. <laughs> And then I was doing it twice a week. So it went from once every two weeks to essentially twice a week. Yeah. And you're like, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah. I was now like, do I want to do now this? Now it's three out of four times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I was definitely hesitant. I just didn't necessarily like the idea of all this weird video of me being on the internet <laughs> for all eternity because James likes to hold on to things forever. So, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm, I'm obviously I'm more comfortable with it now because I've been doing it for so long. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, it did take convincing. I wouldn't, it wouldn't have been something I would have chosen to do. <laughs> no, honestly, right, yeah. I wouldn't have said, "Hey, I'm gonna Let's just suddenly start streaming." Show. Yeah, I, I don't think that's. I would have just picked to do that <laughs> if someone hadn't convinced me to to yeah. take part. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. of course, totally. Yeah. 
Yeah. And Arena Fudd says, now James and Tanya are famous yeah. within our community. Yes, and, and that's fine. <laughs> it's a small enough. Limited fame is fine by me. <laughs> we don't get recognized on the street. <laughs> oh, no. Um, for the radio station, I did get recognized on the street. You did, yeah. yeah. It was, Back it was in the day. It was pretty big. Um, people would yell out my online name. Um, and I'd be like, I don't know that person. Yeah, and I would go just, to concerts, and people would recognize me. That's, oh, that's wow. so cool. Because that is so it was cool. tied to certain genres of music. Of course, So I'd yeah. go to those, and they'd be like, hey, I know you. Like, we know They'd you. come up to me, and I'd be like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm very used to this. Super used to this. Yeah. yeah. And and us being filmmakers, we have to do this as well. Oh, yeah. like, like We have to do car red carpets and interviews and stuff. So and we, talk about our films, yeah. Yeah, it's very... It's a little easier when you... A lot easier for yeah. us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. <laughs> oh. <laughs> how long have you been wearing? Okay, this is what James. How, how long this? have you been wearing that hairstyle? Uh. <laughs> so in my wedding photos, I have hair that's that long. Yeah. yeah. It is buzz a cut. buzz cut. Um. And it was like that for a very long time. Yeah, until I just before I started going to school, actually. Yeah. And I started growing it out, probably like. A year but it was very that. different school too right it was it was it was i don't know how it was it was terrible um it was nice yeah it was it was different yeah it was it was shorter and and just like i can't remember like to the front or something yeah it was very sharp angle going up like that or something like that i don't know it was it's an evolving thing and now it's kind of settled into something i've slightly changed it recently you can't tell because it's now evolving a bit but it's it's all the same length now almost it's terrible going down the back before it was kind of a, up at an angle in a kind of karen haircut <laughs> which was not great um but now it's kind of karen haircut <laughs> so now now i kind of put it back sometimes straight back or sometimes to the side depending on the mood mood usually goes to the side uh there you go, hair. <laughs> Fun stuff. But I keep it short on the sides because my hair gets very thick. Yeah. I have to keep it short or it just goes poof. Yeah. You can already see it. That's you a, almost that's a, like this. That's a humble brag right there. James is like, my hair's so thick. <laughs> well, in certain ways. <laughs> it, it just gets it to be a lot. Just It's an annoying. I'm jealous. <laughs> uh, and it's not somebody's really saying uh, RC70? Yep. Yes. Uh, you almost chopped it all off a month ago or so, didn't you? Uh, all of it? No. What was I deciding between? But you were thinking about You like were thinking about making it shorter. It. Yeah, yeah. All, not all of it, but more like a super conservative style haircut where it's like just super conservative. like that long on the top. You know, a normal yeah. haircut nobody would Why? care about. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was just sick of it. Well, be <laughs> Lots of people do that, uh, um, yeah. where they're like, "I'm sick of my hair," and they either go, "Yeah, that's true." They go yeah, super short, and they're like, "Then they regret it immediately." Yeah. Oh, I know. I did that <laughs> once when I was in university. I was like, "I hate my hair," and I just Arr, like yeah. it was like complete, like I cut it all completely. Like it was like right. very short, and I hated it. <laughs> of course. And it obviously takes I, years to grow oh, back. It God, was just the yes. worst. Yeah. So I'm. So I thought. Okay, I'm either going for one or the other, and I'm not certain. So why not go for the long one first? And then if I don't like that, then I get both options, right? Yeah. So I could have the long and then not know that I don't like it, and then go for the short. Yeah. And rather Ooh. than short, and ah. then be like, oh my god, <laughs> it went nuts all of a sudden. Yeah, go for the short. You can't go the long really quick. You have to wait years. So this way, I, I figure it out both ways. All right. Um... Viking haircut, yes, that is exactly oh. what I am going for right now is a Viking haircut. Nice. That's the name of it. It needs to be a lot longer though. All right, okay, uh, let's move on from the haircut. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, so, li um, so lithium. Uh, li litom. Litom. For James and Tanya, uh, this question, I would like to know how much everyone's day jobs translates over to the skillet putting putting on the the streaming yeah. everything everything seems so much more professional <laughs> no. and consistent and consistent than many other streamers well um i touched on this previously about my day job as a filmmaker it obviously translates quite a bit 
over because there's audio involved, there's video involved. I'm a, a, I'm a producer and an editor, so I end up with all the footage. So I have to make sure the footage looks nice and is presentable. Um, and as a producer, I'm there the whole way, making sure everything runs well. Um, so it translates a lot over to the audio and video that you see, but also as a producer, the organization that's involved in putting together something. And you love doing that. I love it. And you can see that I maintain all the lists of every homebrew that comes out for the Atari system. And I do the Atari Homebrew Awards, which is all more organization than anything else. Yeah. And I don't mind being in front of the camera. I'm not a great storyteller or anything. I'm not really funny. I have a very dry sense of humor. <laughs> Um, funny. So, well, that's good. One person likes it. Um, <laughs> the person, who, person who counts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> you are funny. So I'm good enough in front of the camera, which is which is good enough. And the rest of it is kind of my skill set that props it up, is being organized and be able to present something in a decent format, and be professional about it, um, especially for the award show. That's very important for all the uh, developers to honor them and all the hard work that they've done. Um, so yeah, it translates really well from my day job. Like really, really good crossover. Yeah, yeah. totally. <laughs> and uh, no, Tanya has already kind of answered that, but yeah. Uh, have I about my day job? Oh crossover. no, I just missed them. Ah! ah, you have two lives left. Push them. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> My day job does not translate to this in any way, shape, or form. No. No. I have a very technical job. I work in a lab. So, um, uh, yeah, no, not, not at, at all. all. <laughs> not at all. So it's kind of a break from that. It is a break, which is nice. Different. I think it's important to have, you know, diverse experiences in life. And yeah. this definitely provides something <laughs> new for me. Um, but no, it doesn't. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, our C70 is saying Tanya is really good at this. <laughs> I've been practicing. So. <laughs> no, but I'm, sent, I'm sometimes better at games when I'm not being focused on, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, it's I, true. I have much less anxiety when I'm playing when I, I don't think people are paying attention to me. <laughs> um, um, and that, that leads to a very quick thing. We almost never play the games before we have them on the show. No. I make sure that they're like, OK, this is good enough to be on the show there's yeah. something there's something good about this game something unique about this game psst, psst, get your paws out of the drinks psst, psst. he's like what <laughs> what um yeah so we rarely play the games offline because why not just play them online and show everybody us playing them okay okay this is funny i love this question <laughs> okay so revenge is asking a filmmaker doing a Twitch stream is a bit like a novelist doing slam poetry. <laughs> <laughs> How did it? Are you belittling slam poetry <laughs> yeah, by hey, saying what's that? What's wrong with slam poetry? <laughs> slam poetry was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did it two compare in con in contrast? Yeah. And what each does each of that? What itch does each scratch for you? <laughs> what itch? <laughs> what itch does itch. each scratch? A lot of itch. Yeah. yeah. Um. This kind of leads from the last question about the translation of um, my work into this. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, the itch that this scratches for me is um, supporting a community. Uh, can I go back to the question? Um, um, yeah, supporting a community um, and, and filling in a gap that I think was needed to show off these games and to probably provide feedback for these amazing games. And I didn't think enough people were playing them. So I wanted to make sure that they were shown off. And um, comparing the two, it's, it's quite different, making films and doing this, other than, you know, organization, organizing them. Um, and I, I wouldn't belittle doing a Twitch stream. It's a lot of work, actually. Um, having the organization and to, what the hell's going on with those cats? Um, Just one cat. And, the other one's here. Yeah. And to communicate with all the developers, um, it, it is a lot of work. Um, so hey. I... Oh, that's <laughs> even faster. Oh, my goodness. And I can say, though, that yeah. you started this show after how 
incredibly overwhelming was, it, was to create a first future and to put it out there. That process is ridiculously complex and hard. Oh my God. Yes. Uh, especially when you're an independent filmmaker. So I know that James started this as a way to, I don't want to think about films <laughs> for years. That's what you always say when you finish a film <laughs> yeah, and then a year I'm later done. it's like, okay, let's do it again. Yeah. Uh, let's exactly. suffer again. Suffer. Again. Uh, but I know James was thinking a lot about it when we were going so hardcore on, on promoting the film and, yeah. and, and, and editing it and all that process. And I think this came as a way of him to just kind of like breathe, you know? Yeah. And then it, and then it became, it became way bigger than he <laughs> yeah. ever imagined it would, way which is bigger. incredible. Yeah. But it started just as that. Like I, I'm, I'm a witness of it because I was part of that process of transition between, okay, we're done finally with this film after years. Yeah. Like done to the we point that it was, uh, that is out there streaming and that we don't yeah. have to worry about it. Yeah. Uh, it, it's years into that process, right? So for every film that you make, um, so this this is this came as a, as a result of that being like I need I need a different outlet now. Yeah, it provided a good contrast from what, from what we were doing. Exactly, yeah. it was awesome. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see if we have anything. I think we're good. So just comments. Waiting for Tanya to die on this. Oh we my can god! Go to the next game. I think it's getting close. It's so hard. Oh, still waiting for the ZPH the documentary movie. I've, I've thought about that many times. Not ZPH, but a homebrew documentary. Uh, it's... A, I just don't... I don't think... I haven't found a way that it would be big enough to invest time into it. Like, I think it's very interesting to me how interesting it would be to the general population. I, and I don't want to copy video... Um, what's that video game movie? Indie, indie game. Indie game the movie, because... The only thing I can think of is to do something like that, which is following somebody making a homebrew and taking it to completion. But that's so much like Indie Game the movie that it's like, mm, okay, well, why would I make another movie about something that somebody's done? And I'm very sensitive to replicating somebody else's work and somebody goes, oh, why Why did you make this? There's already a movie by, like this. And I'm yeah. Like, yeah, I know. Um, so maybe one day, but I haven't found the right approach, approach, script, writing effort, and 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 Geo's talked about it to me. Just oh, you should make a movie about that, and I'm like, sure, yeah, <laughs> but you I have mean, to find the right. But we always aspect. connect to 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 humans, right? In, in yeah. any way, shape, or form. That's what makes us love. That's why we all of all, all of us love film, right? Yeah. Either we related close to that character. Or we don't relate it at all, but we find it fascinating that somebody does stuff like that. Yeah. So, well, obviously, Al would be one of the people in the movie. Um, probably Champ Games. John Champo would be another person in the movie. Um, and then, you know, you would follow somebody who's making their first game. Yeah. Like, it, there'll like be that. stories of, like, really people well at the end people, of the day. Yeah. Unknown people. <laughs> people who, you know. Yeah. And I would obviously be the right person to make that no. Of course. <laughs> That's the problem. You're, how you're inside the world. <laughs> yeah. Yay, 2781. Good job. Okay, so let's move on to a different question. Yes. Oh, the South America scene, uh, RC70 is saying, the South America scene would be cool to get a behind the scenes of two. Of two. Yeah. yeah. That's, a pretty, that's, that's a pretty good idea, actually. Okay, so we're gonna open uh, Razor's Edge and play that. This is a, a Brazilian game. So hello to all the Brazilian people out there mm -hmm. who may or may not be watching right now. Um, How's your Portuguese? Uh, <laughs> not that good, yeah. No, not that good. <laughs> it's probably better than mine. <laughs> um, so we're gonna <laughs> pop this in. I haven't opened it. This is. Number three, branded on the back there. Ooh, Wanna fancy. Thank uh, Leonardo Santiago for mm. sending this to us to play, because uh, we had the uh, world premiere of this game um, when it uh, first came out. Oh, it comes in a very nice um, cartridge. It's the um, Activision style cartridge. Oh yeah, I love with these. the top, with the, the yeah, with the, the whole, nice with the handles. The top? Yeah. 
RC70 says, I just got my alien holocaust in the mail a few days ago. Oh, very nice. Yeah. That is, was a very And it has that idea. too, that Activision. Oh, does it? Yeah. It's branded with the, uh, mm -hmm. the number there. Manual here. Oh, and it's got. How's it go? <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I think we have a couple of questions there that we should oh, answer. Good. Okay. Yeah. It comes with a poster, Razor's Edge poster, and there's not many beat 'em up games on this on the 2600. So this is quite unique. Um, and then the manual as well. Um, is this English? Yeah, English, English and Portuguese manual. There we go. It has all the characters. And I think we looked at the manual last time we played the show. I played the game. There we go. So I... Should I play it? Yeah. Or you want you, to play no, it? you... Yeah. Okay. You give it a start. Uh, question. Okay, we'll get Tanya to answer this one. <laughs> Which celebrity... Uh, and the question is but sorry, oh, by a, a bit poet. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Which celebrities would play James and Tanya in ZPH the movie? That's a really good question. Uh, I don't know what celebrity would play me. I always thought. Um, yeah, who? Uh, like people say. People say like, oh, you look like somebody. Like who? who I don't would know. That be? It's funny. Uh, I don't know if I look like any celebrities. Ah. I did when I was young get people saying that I looked a bit like Meryl Streep. Okay. Which I I don't really see. No. Uh, yeah. Interesting. But maybe when I was younger, um, I always thought Drew Barrymore would be a good fit. Yes. Yeah. Oh but, yeah, um, I can see that. But I don't know. I don't know if there's a specific person who I would pick. I don't know who James would, would have to play himself. Have people oh. told you, like, have people ever told you, oh, you look like Never. blah, blah, blah. Never. <laughs> Nobody, unfortunately. I'm very unique, I guess. Yeah. I would pick Henry Cavill to play James. <laughs> just because. Just because. Oh, just because he's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love The Witcher to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. He's awesome. Play James in a film. Oh. Crispin Glover for James for oh, sure. Oh, yes, please. Yeah, Crispin Glover's pretty cool. He's yeah. so yeah. quirky. But he's a bit of an age difference, uh, Carl G says. Richard but Pam maybe Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster. I like Jodie Foster, too. Yeah, there is yeah. a bit of an age difference. Same with Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep will be quite a bit older than me. Uh, but Drew Barrymore is my age, so she yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. fit into that. Idea. And there was another question. We, you can... Uh, Can you go a little uh, bit? Just, back up? Yeah, just yeah, a tiny just bit. I was, I was about to ask that question, but yeah, uh, that one. Oh, has James always been good at tongue twisters related to reading the <laughs> subscriber listings? Uh, there's a reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> we won't get into. Oh, yeah, they could. Oh, know. yes, you should. Um, no, you're not going to mention it? No, no. No. I don't want to. Okay. Um, I don't yeah, want to. Because uh, <laughs> I, I, I can sing as well, so I'm. I'm no, I'm multi talented. <laughs> How about that? Very impressive graphics on this one. I know for a 2600 game, it's amazing. Is there music? And oh, the backgrounds. Should, should there be music? There we go. I just can't. Ah, okay. I don't want to get hit. Ah. Run away! <laughs> Okay. I love this game. It's it's so beautiful. The graphics are amazing. The graphics are so beautiful. Okay, I have another question for you guys. Okay. And this is like, I mean, you kind of have Tosh a little bit of it on it, but this has kind of a different, um, uh, yeah, it's something different that you can answer. For both of you, let's go with you, Tanya. Have you found your work uh, on ZPH stream has provided some benefit in doing your day job? I mean, you mentioned that it has nothing to do with your day job, but uh, I asked because I found that this is what um, Litown Le says. Yeah. I asked because I found my hobbies have actually helped practice some skills I need for my own day job. Mm. I would say I do do things like presentations at work, yeah. Yeah. and it, it knowing that you're being, you know, like that you're on stream or you're discussing things or you're introducing things kind of, kind of gets you into the mode of presenting yeah and I think it is a skill and I think it is something you develop and you get more comfortable in from in front of the camera too and yeah what to say how to interact with people so, in front of people, so I wouldn't yeah. say that's that's a negative at all like and I think if you're a person who leads meetings or gives presentations and I do do that through my work it's um it is helpful yeah yeah I would say Pardon? yeah I think that's totally helpful how about you, James? No. 
<laughs> Not no. at all. Because I've been doing this for a long yeah. time. It is your day job in a lot of ways. So yeah. Yeah, it, it my day job more translated into this than yeah. anything. And the things I've been doing for years. Yeah. How do I not get hit? <laughs> oh, I don't think yeah. I'm gonna make it. Good night, Steve. We'll we'll see you soon. Talk Good to night, you soon. Steve. Okay, so, so I, I don't think so. I don't think it it helped. Maybe a bit more comfortable, but um, you, you've always done radio shows and things, so that yeah, that that so it wasn't hasn't really changed. an issue. I'm better. I'm a much better video game player <laughs> than I was before. Uh, me I'm too, not sure if that actually. helps my day job, but <laughs> but um yeah, not too uh, many video games. No, unfortunately, film. but uh, uh, it definitely yeah, it definitely helps in that sense. I'm, I'm much I can pick up most video games now and play them pretty easily. So that's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go with uh, the what a question by D Train uh, for James and Tani. Do you have any thoughts about how you would handle the show if it grew anymore? <laughs> it's still at stage, whatever. It, it is still at stage, at a stage where everybody, everyone in the chat knows uh, each other. I think, <laughs> so, Pretty. or they say, and where the chat is low enough to be an integral part of the show, mm, which yes. is really nice for building a sense of community. Any thoughts on how that feeling might be preserved in the future if it starts growing more, um, even more? Well, I think you just deal with it as it comes. I mean, there's a possibility that all of a sudden we're on the front page of blah, <laughs> and because we did something. <sighs> And, yeah. But I really doubt that'll happen. This, what we do is a niche within a niche within a niche. Yeah. Um, one, it's video game streaming. Um, two, it's homebrew. Mm -hmm. And three, it's specific systems homebrew, just Atari, just mm -hmm. these ones, not general homebrew. Because mm -hmm. there's a, lots of other video game channels that are way, way more popular than this one, like infinitely more popular, <laughs> but they tend to focus so broadly on like new games or super like NES, like NES um, systems that are, were, had, had a much bigger um, uh, install base. Um, so I don't think it'll ever get to a point where it's overwhelming. And I really, really like the size that it's at for those reasons that were described mm -hmm. in the question, where everybody kind of knows everyone, mm -hmm. um, which I really, really enjoy. As far as the chat is concerned, because um, he kind of mentions the chat, mm -hmm. uh, if you go, if you watch streams where they have tons of subscribers, they'll often restrict the chatting yeah. to subscribers only to kind of keep it to the immediate community, the chat to the immediate community. Yeah. Um, but even that kind of fails. I think if you hit a critical mass, do you know what yeah. I mean? A lot of streamers mods. have their chat in Discord too, not actually on the stream. I've yeah. noticed. Um, There's better tools for. Uh, I so I think I think that's how some streamers deal with like increasing fame, where they have a lot of people watching. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I mean, this channel can probably grow a fair amount without it losing the feel of um, a close community. Like it could still grow a, a, a quite oh, a bit. Yeah. But not feel like you know we're being overwhelmed with people who don't care about the show or who say silly yeah, comments and who spam and, and troll and we don't get a lot of that. There, it happens from time to time. So um, I don't know. I, yeah, there's room to grow still. Yeah, but I like it. I like the community. Oh, I, it's I, great. I I I I think if it was that big, I don't know if I would continue with it <laughs> because yeah. it it would be overwhelming and. It, attracting attention you don't necessarily want to, so... Um, I would continue, it, it would just change a little bit of how it's handled. Yeah. But, but I would do the same thing, because I enjoy it. Yeah. If, if, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't be doing it, that's for sure, because there's art, almost no money in it. Because yeah. the community's small, yeah. which is which is fine. It, it goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a couple of questions here at the sh in, in the chat. Yeah. Uh, uh, Atari 800 XL rules. Uh, question for both of you: What's your favorite game of all time? Uh, all time, by platform or just like ever? Uh, Seems like either, ever. Either way, but ever probably. Uh, Which one do you go back to all the time? Uh, it's probably a better. 
That's hard. I, I, it, it's almost possible mission. <laughs> I would say it, it, it's more platform based. It's mm, like, yeah. like impossible mission for the C64 was by far my favorite game from my childhood. And then on the Nintendo, I was really fond of Battletoads, <laughs> which I never actually completed because it's a really hard game. But I played that game a lot. Um, and then for modern games. Game do I go back to? I think I played the Dragon Age series of games like two or three times through each of them, like one, two, and and uh, Origins. Um, I really love that series of games, like RPG games. So that would be for me. Um, I can't 2600. That's hard because I've played so many new 2600 games. I I would have a really hard time picking for the homebrew the... games we've played. Oh, picking one, I don't know if I'd be able to do that. Um, yeah, Render Ghost also like Dragon Age Origins. I, I have a lot of love for those games, and the writing in them is amazing. Like, amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, even the characters, when you put them together, and you're wandering around the cities, they have conversations with each other. Wow. Depending on their personalities and, like, their interactions. They have whole relationships as you're walking around. That is so cool. <laughs> it's like the thought that went into the dialogue and everything is just I love those games a lot. They're really wonderful games. Okay, we have a question um, here from Meta Lunar 7. Uh, James, are you still involved or passionate about uh, things like digital rights and music copyright issues <laughs> in general? Somebody, and, uh, somebody knows my past. Yeah. Or organizations like the, like the Pirate Party? Yeah, because I used to be um, involved in the Pirate Party of Canada. Um, I did a radio show for them, actually. Um, that was probably the one just before this. I was going to do it into make it into a video series, like a, mm -hmm. instead of the radio. Mm -hmm. um, but this happened. <laughs> um, instead, I, and this is much, I found this much more interesting. Um, I. Um, I don't follow it as much. I'm still extremely passionate about it, but I don't follow it. Um, I mean, you've probably heard me talk about um, my love for physical media instead of um, uh, media that's just like a file and that's stored on another person's server or, or it's there's DRM on something. Mm -hmm. um, where if they turn off their servers and your oh God, and your um, and your system is fried or whatever, um, you can't get it back. Your your, your system is done. Um, so yeah, I am still passionate about it. Um, Pirate Party of Canada is is no more. It doesn't exist anymore. No, because they didn't have. It's just not enough members. You have to have something that's. Usually, to get people really riled up, you have to have something that really infringes on people's rights, uh, that makes them really upset. Food. Um, Food. <laughs> but yeah, I was doing that for a couple of years, actually, the radio show. Um, but I was heavily involved in that. I, I went to DEF CON for a number of years, did their uh, audio video setup mm -hmm. for DEF CON. Like, that's the biggest hacker conference. Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest ones in the world, if not the biggest. Yeah. Um, I have a lifetime membership to the 2600 magazine. Um, I own... It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I registered 2600.ca back in, I don't know, 97 or something mm -hmm. for the magazine. And that points to their website. 2600.ca. I still own it. Um, I, just totally by coincidence that I do a show about the Atari 2600 now. Yeah. So at any point I could just go, yeah, I'm going to make that domain about the Atari 2600 now. <laughs> oh, of, you've thought this through. You've oh, yeah. thought about it. Instead yeah. of the magazine 2600, yeah. which is yeah. the, the, the frequency to get free phone calls on pay phone back in the 80s, 70s, 80s. Yeah. 90s. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. And that is a well-known hacker magazine, right? Very well known. Yeah. Started in 1984. 84, yeah. And they had a radio show, which uh, re I rebroadcast on my radio station. Yeah. Whistles into phone, RC70. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, 
Okay, so we have another question here by D Train. Uh, for James, yeah. you, you've been doing this for five years. Yes. Do you foresee a time when you won't want to do it? Have you or will you talk to anyone about handing it off? Ah, okay. Uh, let's do the second part first. Oh my god, no! <laughs> um, handing it off? Never. Um, Never? <laughs> people... That happened last, like, when I stopped doing the radio shows. People asked about that. It's like, oh, can I do your radio show? Or are you going to hand this off to somebody else? It's like, your own show. You just have to come up with a new name. <laughs> um, um, so, no, nobody can, nobody's, I'm not handing it off to anyone. Yeah. Um, do I foresee uh, this show stopping? Well, eventually. Or that you um, won't want to do it. Oh, I won't? Well, what? it depends on the factor of why I won't want to do it. Um, it's not like I get money for this show that makes or breaks the show. I could still get zero dollars for it, and it wouldn't matter. People wanted to donate, so I set that up. Mm -hmm. People were like, can, can we donate? Can we do something? Give something to you? That's why I set that up, that we have the names at the top of the show and whatever. Mm -hmm. Um... So m monetarily, it wouldn't that that wouldn't stop the show. It's like, oh no, my watchers are going down, my numbers and my mm. money's not coming in. That's that wouldn't stop the show. It would be if it's not funny. Yeah. That's that's the reason I wouldn't do it anymore. And so fun. <laughs> It sometimes it's, it's like okay, what would not make it fun? Yeah. Um, people just complaining about <laughs> what I'm doing. <laughs> like, oh, we don't like the way you're doing and handling this. I get a bit of burnout during the award show because everybody has their own idea of how it should be run. Um, but most part, it's kind of settled down in the past few years because. The rules are well established now, and people understand mm. why I do certain things because that's how it, how it runs the best, uh, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, if if people start complaining all over the place, that's that's when I hate it. Yeah. Um, but you know, <laughs> they can just not watch if they don't like it, and yeah. if they like it, they watch. RC70 says, "Oh, good, I can unsub." No, 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 no. <laughs> 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 if you want. No, 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 no. We uh, we it does keep us in games and playing things. It does. So, yes. <laughs> it does help me buying consoles and games yeah. and stuff. So, um, and I can and, repair them when they break. And Carl G says, we micromanage only because we care so much. I, I know. It. And that's true. And that that's is true. true. And I know yeah. that that's for a fact that yeah. people yeah. make suggestions and they say things because they love it yeah. and they want it to be better. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever their idea of better is. It may conflict with my idea. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes it doesn't. I'm like, that's a great suggestion. Let's yeah. do that. Let's there, add, add that to the show. There's a, I think there's a, a pretty obvious difference between someone who's criticizing to criticize versus someone who's actually trying to provide support and 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 help with the show. So yes. I think there is a difference between those. Oh, two things, and it's for very sure. obvious. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And it still does. It obviously gets to anybody who says you're, you should do this in a certain way, even yeah. if it's better. Yeah. You have to just take it as yeah. it comes and yeah. think about it and step back and go okay yeah that is that is better yeah we have the same approach to dealing with those kinds of uh situations <laughs> Why we work well together i think so <laughs> i i think it's like i'm i'm always i always welcome criticism but don't, don't expect me to agree with you <laughs> right away right away because most like most things you have to kind of think about it you know like yeah. like it's when people want you to That's immediately true. agree with you or immediately say you're yeah. doing the right thing that um that you know you can't expect someone to not think about you know suggestions and changes and that kind of yeah thing. So, absolutely yeah um okay let's uh have another question question here by carl g carl g <laughs> the show is such a huge time commitment on your part uh -huh. i'm curious if you have days where you're supposed to stream where you're just like you're just aren't feeling it and how you handle that uh, those are few and far between. Um, so yes, there are those days where I'm like, uh, okay, it's scheduled, I have to do it, people are wanting it, people are going to tune in, people are going to say, why isn't it on? Um, yeah, so I do, I do get those, those days 
where where it is where it is difficult, um, or when my t when technology isn't working. Oh, That's yeah. usually when it really takes its toll on me. Um, when things are just going wrong, like oh the internet's down or oh my computer keeps crashing, which it has been for the past couple times. Um, but I. Yeah, so those kind of things uh, make me go, ugh, is it going to crash again? This is going to make me insane. Um, or I just don't have a great idea for the next show. Um, or a show went really badly, in my opinion. You guys may not tell. And Tandy can't tell when I feel a show goes bad. Yeah. Um, and it could be anything. I, I don't even know sometimes why I feel a show went bad. Didn't go as well as you wanted it to. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I didn't feel like the people enjoyed the games that we're playing, or I didn't play the games very well. It's like, oh, I just died I in this game, it. and I couldn't yeah. even get anywhere, and I was terrible at it. It's like, well, I should be at least decent at it. Luckily, I'm, de I'm decent at most games. I can play them, right? If I was terrible... Oh my god, this game, this show would be a slog. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can demonstrate the games at least a little bit so that people aren't like, oh my god, this guy. <laughs> right? Um, so, like this, like I've been playing for 15 minutes, it's, it's fine. <laughs> and most games. But some games, people go, oh, you kind of suck at that game. You need practice. Oh! Right? He's got a knife. Yeah, he does. Dodge the knife! This guy has to punch. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Okay, so... So, yeah, that's... I do get those those days. Yeah. Okay, so we have a question here for both of you from Scrummy. Have you had any interesting dreams about video games? <sighs> interesting dreams about video games? Like, have I ever dreamt I'm in a video game? Or, I don't know. Something like that, yeah. No, but I have played video games where you close your eyes and you can still see the screen <laughs> under your eyelids. Like, I can't think of a video game dream specifically. Yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Dreams about video games. As far as developing them or coming up with their own games, James has lots of ideas. Have any of your ideas come through your dreams? Uh, not dreams. It's usually what I do uh, while I'm trying to fall asleep, is think of ideas for video games. Well, see, that's a good time to... that's almost like And dreaming. I have written down uh, dozens oh. of them from thinking about them in bed. In bed. <laughs> that's what I fall asleep to. It's just ideas, and that's... That's, that's um, a good idea. Or when I'm vacation on vacation on the beach, that's when I think of all my ideas. Because <laughs> usually on vacation, I'm like finishing a project or finished a project. Uh, and it's relaxing, and I think a lot of people come up with, well, at least I come up with ideas um, when I'm relaxing because your mind is not preoccupied with mm. other things. With life. Yeah. With life, with normal life, because you're always like, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. But when you're on vacation, you're supposed to be like completely relaxed and not concentrating on it. So I have a binder and a list full of video games that I want to make. Yeah. And like I've seen it. It's a long, it's a the, long um, list. Yep. Yep. And the other day, like there's one in the um, forum right now called the Core, and and you know Thomas Yanch has has got a kernel working for it, mm. and he's like, and I was just thinking about that the other night. It's like, oh, what kind of games could come from that? And and I came up with an awesome game idea, mm. unrelated to it. It just kind of evolved from that one. Um, so yeah, yeah. I don't. I never dream about. <laughs> no. All right, let's move on to a question here. It's from uh, Buffalo Beef Burger Time. Can you explain a little what your goals are as Zero Page Homebrew? I've seen you around mostly when you pop up to add new games to your list, and I see that you play homebrews on your Twitch channel. Yes. But are there any wider projects you're involved in that I might not be aware of? Are you a homebrew developer yourself? Um, so, wider projects, uh, I do run the Atari Homebrew Awards, or I organize it, along with another, a lot of other people who help out uh, immensely. Um, so that's a pretty big project. Um, in terms of homebrew, I haven't made one yet. I've done lots of 
in my past, in the early years, in high school, programming, and even made some very silly little games. Um, but I do plan, like I just said, all those game ideas that I have, I, I do want to make at least one game. And, and if I can make one game, I know I can make another one and another one, he said. Oh, um, so I, that's something I do want to do, is um, be, uh, at least make one game develop one game because I think that would be a lot of fun and you know if I uh, talk about games all the time at least should try and make one too um, so yeah yeah that is something I want to do uh, other projects that are related um, I did moderate a talk on homebrew games at uh, Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo um, I don't know if I would do a talk just on games just by myself homebrew the homebrew scene but um, that's a possibility in the future. Um, I would have to completely put that together first to know that it would be actually be decent, that people would care about it. Uh, but that could be in the future, um, doing a talk at a, at a retro expo. They'd also have to say that they want to hear from me too. I'm like, who are you? What? Get out of here. <laughs> okay, I have another question here. It's pretty cute. <laughs> it's from uh, Kabuto Kenzo. <laughs> I think that's how you say it. <laughs> okay. Are they siblings? So obviously they're referring to you both. <laughs> Are they siblings or married? <laughs> how did they come up with the idea of doing the show? What do they do? So this is a like five part question. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. Are these siblings or married? Uh, we are not siblings. No, we're not. <laughs> we are married. We don't make out on camera, no, so it's hard no. to tell. No, no. So yeah, it can be hard to, to, to determine that if our relationship is platonic or. Uh, yeah, we have yeah, tiny otherwise. little uh, yeah. uh, disagreements on the show yeah. from time to time. Yeah, yeah. That but should, that happens. That should give it away. Between siblings or married people. Very, exactly. Very true, very true. I fight a lot with my brother. And and when you put the last name. <laughs> The last name on the screen it's like um it's hard to tell yes yes oh the other questions how did they come up with the idea of doing this show that would be all james but i think you answered that right a little yeah a little bit um yeah i i fa found out about homebrew i enjoyed it i am a i cannot help but broadcast things i do this kind of thing i've been doing it for 25 years um, it came from watching the movie Pump Up the Volume with Christian Slater. I'm sure everybody watching knows that movie because yeah. <laughs> that's the right age range. Yeah. And it just put a bug in me and I'm like, oh my god, that's what I want to do. This guy is so cool. It was all about pirate radio when you were yes. a teen. Yeah. yeah. And, and when I was a teenager, I was like, how do I be a pirate radio station? <laughs> yeah. How do I do that? And I looked into it and went, that's really illegal. And, you can and get, I love it. And I love it. <laughs> and, and you can get caught just like he did in the movie. So it's not a good idea to do that unless you've got a floating boat off the coast. Don't try it at home, kids. Don't try it at home. So then in 1999, the blah, 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 the, I, that software was released. I did make a radio station finally. Yeah. Uh, you know, eight, nine years after I watched the movie, 10 years after I watched the movie. And I haven't stopped since broadcasting mm -hmm. like Christian Slater did then. Mm -hmm. And always interactive, almost always interactive shows. Yeah. Like he did with callers, mm -hmm. with letters, with things like that. And I just, I just loved it. And you know, my love of video games and broadcasting collided. There's peanut butter in my chocolate and there yeah. we go. This <laughs> show came to be. But you can't kind of conceptualized it while you were making the film. And I remember you talking about wanting to do it during the film but just having when we were when you were making the film you just did right. not have the time no. and and that was you know in the yeah I think I came up with it around 2014 2014 and it took a few years for you to get that off the ground because the film was taking up so much of your time so yeah so, so 2018 yeah. February was when this show started yes yeah okay and what do they do in real life I am a filmmaker with this lovely woman who is sitting beside me, yeah. Giovanna. Uh, we make uh, incredible uh, films together that are uh, socially relevant. Um, we've made a highly awarded documentary 
um, called A Perfect 14 about plus size models and their lives and everything around modeling and plus size modeling. And uh, but we also uh, make fictional films as well and TV series. And uh, yeah, that's my that's my day job is making uh, making awesome um, yeah. thought provoking content. And uh, Tanya's a cat sitter. <laughs> no, I, I I have a day job. I'm a, a little bit deliberately vague about it because yes. of the nature of my work. But I work in a lab, and I'm a biologist, and that's that I can't say. So I do I will say that. Does it so, have anything to do with cats? It has nothing to do. with oh, cats. I wish be it so did. So much more interesting. <laughs> if I was breeding point. kitties, oh, you know, genetically cross... good breeding kitties. Yeah, genetically modified kitties. kitties oh, the yeah. cutest kitties yeah. ever made. That's so funny. <laughs> um, uh, Vitoko asked a question it's really quickly. Oh, oh, yum, oh yum, time yum, for yum. It's about time. Oh, perfect. I'm on a go screen. Okay. Uh, are you going to get it set up? We don't have a lot of treats left. Uh, I think there's enough, though. Just do you, enough. Do you want to feed them? Uh, do you want the pleasure of feeding yes. the kitties? Okay. Okay. What do I have to do? <laughs> oh, um, get this focused. Someone was just asking about when I'll do a stream about my handicrafts. Well, Vitoko, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, maybe, maybe we can set that up. If there's a day where James is not in the no. mood to actually play video games, I will do some resin uh, crafting. Um, so you can all make your own zero page, beautiful zero page coasters. So there, there you go. You go. <laughs> and then we have this awesome question from uh, Vitoko. Vitoko. Vitoko, eight yeah. bits. Yeah. Could you produce, edit a film in Spanish? <laughs> well, is that for actually, Gio? If it's for Gio, I think the answer is yes. <laughs> no, I think, I, think, I think they're talking about James. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, one second, this camera is like oh, on being like funny? manual focus or something. Oh no, what's going on there? Oh yeah. Well, you're just going to have to see very fuzzy cat. Okay, it's fuzzy cat time. They're fuzzy. Oh, who did that? Okay, get the treats. Who did that? That was, that, that, was, that, was, that, was um, that was Sprite. Oh, that was Sprite. Oh, yeah. Sprite. One point for Sprite. So yeah. one? Yeah, give Sprite one. Make sure you give it to Sprite. Yeah. Out on the floor. Ring the on bell. The floor? Okay, yeah. Sorry. Ring the bell. Ring the I'm bell. Atari. Atari. I'm going to shut the door so he has a fighting chance of getting it. Yeah, that was uh, Sprite again. So give to Sprite. And then Atari did it to us. Oh, <laughs> did he? <laughs> Did it, if Atari did it, give Atari give one. Atari. Yeah, yeah, he did, he did. So it's 2 1 for Sprite. Okay, you do it, Atari. Oh, I guess no, I did. Yeah, it. Give him one, give him one. Him. Yeah. Okay. It'll encourage him to do more. Oh, they can't see it. Sorry. It was Sorry, fuzzy. It's, we're not sure why it's all fuzzy. <laughs> I think it's on like manual <laughs> mode or something. Well, it's having a secret bi biological experiment. <laughs> yeah, I do. Metallion R7. Okay. Oh, that was. Do you want me? I'll keep going here. Okay, Atari, you're doing a good job. What are we up to? Focus. What are we up to? Is it two two? Three two. I think it's two two. Uh, no, two. no, he had he's got three. Four. Okay, one. three two. For Sprite. Go. Oh, three three. Atari, you gotta click, keep that door closed, eh? Next. Oh, smack it. Smack Try it. again. Smack it. You can do it. You can do it. Four. That's adorable. Four three. <laughs> four, four four. Four four. <laughs> yeah. Oh nice. <laughs> Five four. Oh, it's better now. Good. Yeah, I fixed it. Just undid the zoom setting or the focus setting. Oh, okay. Five, five. okay so um, the question was um, to do a film in Spanish. Yeah. Uh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, we are Six, currently uh, in development to do a film that will be uh, at least partly or a lot in Spanish, Six. actually. Um, we can't say anything about it right no. now, really. Seven five. But Seven, five. it is very much a Spanish film. Very, very much. Seven, six. <laughs> Um, and luckily, uh, my Six. film partner uh, speaks uh, very fluent Spanish, I, if I understand correctly. Who does? Oh. oh. <laughs> Nine, six. Oh, like, ¿Qué? 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 ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's my first language. Spanish is my first language. So she can translate ten. for me. Okay, ten. I, I've been doing a, a very small amount and I'm very lax at it, uh, learning oh, Spanish six. from... Duolingo, is it? Yeah, Duolingo. Yeah. Okay, we're out of treats. Did you have the lid? Oh, Sprite. Oh, okay. Always Sprite. 
The lid is over on your side. Oh, and then and then Kabu Tokenzu uh, says, um, and finally just congr congratulate you. I would like to congratulate you. Oh, thank you so I've much. I've been seeing you for almost one year, and I love oh, the show. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we are coming up on our five-year show anniversary in February. That's crazy. It is. It's very crazy. Can't believe it's been that long. We need a cake for the 50-year uh, show. Great. Okay, so we have another question here by D Train. Darcy runs a game shop. Yes. Any thoughts? Any thoughts about doing an annual Atari Day there? Um, we have thought about that. I know Tanya suggested it. I've, yeah. I've never approached Dar Darcy on it. The issue is bandwidth. Mm. Um, and also, um, well, the Tar Age Day would be a little bit more tough than doing the awards from there. Mm -hmm. um, but there's tons of room there, which would be a big bonus. And you have lovely backgrounds of board games oh, and stuff, yeah. which is really cool. It would cool. be amazing. He has a very cool um, store. It's just the transporting all the equipment there. I would. It's bad enough bringing it upstairs to do those special shows. Mm. Because um, yeah. there's a lot of setup, and not only the setup is testing it all and making sure it all works again after, because you can't imagine the wiring that goes <laughs> into this. Because yeah. right now there are there's the camera that you're seeing us on. There's and so it's capturing that. Then it's capturing the game footage. Then it's capturing the cat cam as well. Uh, it's capturing the microphone audio, um, and there's a million other things that go on as well. So there's so many wires and inputs and upscalers. Um, <laughs> so many wires, it's just a Tony Mouse. So, so many wires. So many wires. So it's, it's bad news. Yeah. So it's unlikely and not really necessary. It's more of a pain in the ass than anything else. If do. ever there was like a homebrew tournament or something. Yes. Then something you, big. Something like, where you had eh. lots of people more than just a couple. Yeah. I think it would be pretty cool to do it at Darcy's place. You yeah. know, like where you had lots of stuff set yeah. up. But that would make a lot of that sense. Sort of I'm sure yeah. as long as it didn't interfere with his business, it would be he'd be all for it. Yeah, he would. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's pretty cool like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we have these kind of questions that you kind of have to just go for it without even thinking much. Okay. I like this. Yeah. Uh, there by Jason um, underscore. Underscore. Sorry, I always forget. That's okay. Jason underscore Atari. Um, for James and Tanya. Favorite movie, Tanya? Ah. Uh, <laughs> go, 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 go. Uh, just kidding. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> I'm terrible at these questions. I oh, never have like one off ready. the top of my head. Yeah, you're not supposed oh my to goodness. be thinking much. I, yeah, I didn't. No, but that's okay. Results in no answer. <laughs> yeah, like, we like so many movies and we watch a lot of movies. Like, I just want to say, like, with Gio and other friends, we do um, movie marathons all the time. It's it's hard. I mean, one of my favorite films is actually Train Spotting. It is. Uh, that is uh, also. What's that other film that uh, we watch all the, or you want to watch all the time? With Jennifer Lopez. Oh, oh um. <sighs> and and. With George Jennifer Lopez? Clooney. George yeah. Clooney and Jennifer oh, Lopez. Geez. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, not, no, uh, right? It's older. Yeah. Why can I, I... I always want to call it the big hit, but that's a completely different film. Not Geely, no. No, it's... Yeah. <laughs> it's a good film. Not Geely. Uh, no, with them. It is set in the same universe... It's so good. ...as Tarantino film. Yes. Uh, because it's by the same author. It's the same author. ...as uh, it's Jackie me. Brown. Oh, okay, okay. So Which this, one is that, though? It's the same cop is in both films played by the same person with the same character name. Yeah. You have a computer right here. Look it up. Okay, <laughs> well, you can answer okay. yours now, in the meantime. Favorite film is Impossible. Impossible. Um, I could probably narrow it down if I go, okay, here's the genres, here's the directors. I can, I can say directors. Yeah, exactly. That's um, an easier answer. Tarantino, because he just loves his craft so much and it reflects in his films. Um, also Kubrick as well, because he was such a diverse filmmaker. It's, he's so talented at every single genre that it's unbelievable. Yes, you are. Okay, so... Um, but for film, oh my god, that's impossible. Let's answer the other one while Tanya comes back. Favorite band? That's also impossible. 
Um, at one point, I would say um, the Forgotten Rebels, just for no particularly good reason, um, because they're just a Canadian punk band, and I just think they're cool. Um, if I narrow down genres, I like a lot of genres. The most recent kind of genre I like. Oh my god, this guy's kicking my ass. It's not a good time to answer this question. Stop it. Throw it. One second. Um, is. Um, um, synth pop and. Um, I like synth pop and I like retro wave music. Mm -hmm. And my latest favorite band that is a synth pop band is. That's why I'm delaying. <laughs> uh, um, no, it's out of my mind. I'll, I'll tell you genres that I like. I like punk. I like synth wave. I like retro wave or synth pop and retro wave. Industrial. Um, um, I was into rap a lot from the 80s to the mid 90s. And then kind of rap evolved into something a little bit different. And, um, those are my favorite genres. <laughs> RC's, it's so hard to tell. RC70 says, you like synth pop because of all the wires? <laughs> yep. Actually, I like synth pop because of video games. Um, my first real exposure to that type of music was um, chiptune music, the intros that uh, for video games and the video game music and the, the, the um, demo, demos that people would make on the Commodore 64 with the SID chip, especially the crackers, um, the pirates that would put their, you know, name before the game and they would have these cool intros with awesome music and great visuals. Mm -hmm. And that translated really well over to synth pop because it was the same kind of music except with the vocals. And I'm really into um, kind of melodic, moody vocals. Um, not uh, bright and cheery, more emo, type, not emo music, but em emotional type uh, lyrics that, that's also very uh, melodic. Oh, last stage. Yay, stage four, but I have zero lives. Yeah. Okay. Out of sight, as RC70 says. Out but of I'm sight. like, I know we have, I have it. Upstairs, and I was like yeah. going upstairs, I'm looking at it. Of course you can't find it. When Question, you're are you ever going to... Out of sight? <laughs> out of sight. Okay. Are you ever going to finish Fantastic. watching Halt and Catch Fire? No, because we don't have the, the streaming platform that <laughs> yeah. streams anymore. on anymore. I don't think Which so, one? Yeah. It's a uh, TV show. TV show about uh, early uh, computer systems. Yeah. Mm. So, favorite okay. band for... Favorite band for you? Uh, I don't have a favorite band. <laughs> no. I don't. I don't. I don't. I... I, I yeah, I listen like to all kinds many. of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's favorite a problem. favorite food. When you listen to too many too much music and too many movies, it's I, yeah. like I don't know, all of them. Uh, um, depending on the time, on the day or the month or yeah, how I'm feeling. Can't imagine asking you those questions. Either. Oh my god, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> all three of us are very into movies and music. Yeah. 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 Favorite food. favorite food. Oh, if I have a choice, what do I usually gravitate towards? Um. <laughs> the cat's yeah. crying. Why is he why crying? Uh, yeah, he's being silly. Lately, it's been Vietnamese, like banh mi's. We bought, we order oh, banh mi's yes. all the time. So Those are um, sandwiches. Um, Vietnamese sandwiches. Vietnamese sandwiches. Um, yeah. I Vietnamese also, food is so good. What else if I'm given the choice? I don't know. Pizza! I like pizza. I, there's so not diverse. a lot of food I don't like, to be honest. <laughs> food is delicious. I love yeah, food. Ramen. You were talking about ramen oh, earlier. I like love really ramen. good Japanese ramen. I love a lot of. I love sushi as well. I There's not a lot of food I don't like. <laughs> James? Uh, um, I really like Shepherd's Pie. Uh, He's trying to convince me to make one for him. So Canadian. <laughs> yeah, it's very Canadian, very British. Although uh, we do make a, a vegetarian version, so yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I really like pizza. 
Ooh, that's new. Yeah, I've never Have made we it seen to this him? level Yeah, I, I don't recognize. It's beautiful with the, the ocean scene. Leo, this is amazing. Yes, is. is he in the chat? He was, yeah. Oh, he was nice. trying to give you tips, but you oh. were you were kind of talking and... I'm doing and, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you're doing I good. Get this guy. Now. Oh, there we go. Yeah, smack him in the head. Yeah, it's the only way you can get these yeah, moving guys. Yeah, you can't, can't punch them. You can't punch them. Just run over you. And then the last question we have for the day. Oh, we have one in the chat. Okay. And this one is one of those like fast wood chips. This one's pretty easy. Apple or Android? Okay. Uh, well, it's Android for both of us, yeah, for sure. Android. I know Geo is Apple. Yeah. I'm Apple. Um, <laughs> so but I'm, I don't do that programming thing. So. <laughs> yeah, but just for everyday use, too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. So when I, I've had a cell phone since like 94. Um, That's but, insane. <laughs> and I've had the exact same number since then, too. That's my crazy. Cell phone. Um, um, to the head, yeah. That's a Canadian reference. Yeah. Uh, so when it came to, oh, now you have to choose between Android and Apple, because there was a time before that where it's like, oh, you just there were many random yeah. ones that just had your dial and you could use yeah, totally. T9 for texting. Um, I did have a Windows phone be oh. before that, and I also had a Palm Pilot based phone as well. Oh, wow. Those were operating systems yeah. before yeah. Android and Apple. So I've been on, on board operating systems for quite a while. Yeah. But when it came to choose, and I did have to make a choice between um, Apple and Android, um, I looked at the environments and I noticed the one big difference is you can load whatever you wanted on an Android phone. Mm. With an Apple, you had to go through their store. You had to. It was almost impossible to put whatever you want on it. Still is um, like just, yeah. yeah, and that's what it's for. It's to lock it down so nobody messes with it, nobody wrecks it, nobody puts viruses, nobody it's, which is puts great, dangerous yeah. things on it. But, but I James wants more. to put dangerous things. I want to put dangerous <laughs> things. I want to mess with my operation. I want to have fun with it. Um, <laughs> and that's just what I went for. So yeah. go. that's the reasoning behind why. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a question in the chat. Yeah. Name an actor or actress that has both a very good and very bad movie. <laughs> oh, that's easy. Nicolas Cage. And uh, in other words, have you seen a bad movie that you bet, bet for it because of the actor actress? Oh, um, what for it? Uh, but you kind of watched it or, or went because of the it. actor. Because of the actor or actress. actress. Yeah. Oh, many. Oh. Uh, well, how about Wonder Woman 2? <laughs> that was a terrible film. First one was passable. So that's mm, okay. okay. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. But a f an actor that I really, really like, and I went to watch. I usually watch because of directors or stories, not because of actors. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because I know that actors can be in terrible films and good films, and it's not really their fault other than picking it and looking through the script and going, yeah, this looks okay, or give me the money. Yeah. <laughs> it's more about, I think, the director or the writer for me. Well, I was a huge fan of Blade. Oh, and two and three film. were garbage. <laughs> <laughs> two, I don't remember two being as bad, but three was awful. But you I think both it were for awful. The actor, or did you watch it for the concept? Uh, it was a, a, a concept, but also it's the actor too. I mean, the actor is. Anyway, so I can yeah. think of examples like that where you watch part two or something, and you're deeply disappointed. The Matrix series were a bit like that. Matrix oh. one was gorgeous, amazing. Yeah. Two and three, I didn't find them terrible. They just weren't as good. They're not engaging. It's um, like, what's going on? And like some actors, an actor can be a good actor in a bad movie and have bad source material too, right? Yeah. So you never know what the actual cause of a bad could be the director, Acting could role be is. the writing, could, could be, be the, the editing editor, even. Yeah. could be yeah. anything, could be the decision by the company, that by the production company to like, oh, you've got to put this in it, or blah, whatever, right? And I think that's why some actors have a bit of a cult following, because they're just so quirky. You know, like Jeff Goldblum would be one. Like, I would always kind Very of be interested quirky. to see Jeff Goldblum in a film, even if it was a terrible film. Because you know it's yeah. going to be something going on with so that film. Because he's so quirky. And, and Nick Cage is a bit like that too. Like yeah. even a bad Nick Cage film isn't that bad. You know, like it's bad in a good his way. New one, Nick Cage. Yeah, that's the his best new one is, for sure. His new one is supposed 70. to be amazing. Is it? Oh yeah. About him with him in it, pretending to be him, kind of. Which oh, one? Yes. Which one? Yes. 
I can't remember. Someone, someone pays him to go to an island or something. Yeah. And he's playing himself, but it's like an action film. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I heard that was good, and we saw that one. Pig. Pig. Oh my god. Oh, that's such a good yeah. film. It was a great film, and it wasn't what you expected it no. to be. Incredible. It, it wasn't. It's not what you you expect it. You kind of think it's going to be like a horror film almost, yeah. but it's not really. Or an action film, it, and it's, it's like no. It's a very very good it's film. It's beautiful. It's a so thoughtful drama about yeah. some guy. Who but we'll, pig. Yeah. <laughs> Nick Cage Love is the it. best example for sure. Yeah. Yes, he yeah. is. He takes, yeah. does terrible films and amazing films. Vitoko says, uh, what is it, Bruce Willis as well. I think he's had a bad run in the last little while, which was well, kind of sad. That's not. But he's a good actor. He is. Yeah. Not really his fault. It's sad though. It is sad. Yeah. yeah. But he's been in amazing films and yeah. lots of terrible ones, even yeah. when he was uh, doing well. Like doing the, well, yeah. yeah. Or like Will Smith too, you know? Oh, yeah. But he's you know, such a great actor, but oh, he's amazing. He's been so many terrible films. I think they just get seduced by the money, and they just go for the really bad films. Yeah. Because a lot of the bad ones are big blockbusters. They're yeah. not the smaller films, yeah. right? Usually. No, they are the, the smaller ones. That those, those are the ones that they go for it like, like with the passion. Like yes. I really want yeah. to do this. Yes. Yeah. Because I love the script, or I, or yeah. I, I believe in the script, whatever. And, and I have a suspicion that if you take a really well-known actor who's got a lot of experience and you put them on a smaller film, they actually have a little bit more influence over the film yeah. too, and they probably like that. Yeah, you're right. They give them more, more sway, more room to act, to do what they want. And sometimes that works out well, you yeah. know, because they have that experience and they can, they can live in the source material. That's what happened with Pick, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like the director. It was like it's a new guy, and then he yeah. got, I guess, because of the script. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, got to have an amazing actor that brought so much into it. Oh, RC said we saw Weird. Is oh, that weird, the that Al we Yankovic do. story? We do want to see that. We want to see that, but we, we can't it. watch it in Canada. No, it's nowhere. Because it's, it's on like Roku. It. It's on Roku. Yeah. So oh, we that's can't the watch US, it. I guess. Yeah, it's oh. US only. So we really want to watch that film. Anyway. Eventually. Yeah. It'll come. Yeah. Teleprompter says amen to Android. <laughs> amen to Android. <laughs> yeah. Apple's uh, good. They make a good environment. Uh, it's just not for me. And yeah. I'm, I'm no part of it, so there's no point at this point to buy one. I own, yeah. I've owned one Apple product in my life, and it was a Mac Mini, and it was for my car pewter before Your everything. Your car pewter? I forgot we had a Mac Mini in the car. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. And, it, and I put a screen in there, and it had a keyboard, yeah. and we played music off But of that's hard true. Drive. You're right about that. Like, if you're like if everything like if your ecosystem like everything is like apple yeah. like it wouldn't make sense for me to buy oh. anything because my my computer is apple my phone is apple Tablet. my watch is apple exactly like my ipad yeah exactly so. yeah. anyways you're doing very well by the way yes i found a good formula because <laughs> there's only punches and kicks really and blocks yeah. um so if a kick doesn't work i go for a punch and then kick yeah and it's uh worked really well Almost finished. This is the oh. last level, and I think it's very the last close, level. Very close to the last person. Wow! Oh. Punch kick. It's all in the mind, says Arcee. Yep. I'll include it on my totally legit halt and catch fire disc I sent to the PO box. <laughs> 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 thank okay. you, Arcee. Seventy. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't mind bad movies as long as they own it. True. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's true. You can enjoy a bad movie yeah yeah exactly. i think a movie can have elements that aren't good but other elements that are really good and it makes it worth watching totally, totally. not every movie is perfect all the way through or it doesn't have issues but it doesn't mean it's a bad film yep. anyway so we watched glass <laughs> onion last night is that the last of the questions i'm guessing yes yeah, so okay. we're done with the questions Yay. if somebody yeah. else has any question just throw it in yeah. the chat yeah if we missed any or you want to bring up one that maybe yeah. scrolled up the screen you are very welcome to type in the chat if you have any questions for us exactly so oh there are six stages leo says oh my god okay <laughs> uh that's gonna be uh, oh my gosh nice guy i have on my last life yeah Glass Onion got me. <laughs> I like Glass Onion a lot. Yeah. This is stage five, right? You were saying? Uh, I think it's four, but we'll know soon. I think this is the last guy on this level. Four? Yeah. 
Yeah, um, Glass Onion was excellent. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, good Very... writing. A little bit, little bit silly, but not too much that I'd be like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> it was a little bit silly. Yeah. I find, I, I don't mind a little bit of silliness as long as it still feels relatively grounded. Yeah. Like a lot of yeah. the silliness was in the characters who were kind of caricatures. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't have an issue with that. Like I, I thought the writing was excellent. Yes. Actually. Very well crafted, very well put together. Yeah. The, the script was very good. Yeah. And it's nice to see a film that's well produced and well made that isn't an action film. Yes. Yes. Because yeah. it's, it's a story based film. It's a murder mystery. Yeah. It's no action. Yeah. And it's got the, the and such great actors in it too, oh, yeah. like Ed Norton. Did yeah. you watch it? Have you no, seen no, it? No, no, I haven't seen it. Just Did like, you see the first one? Yeah, the Knives Out. Yeah. Did yeah. you like that one? I think it was pretty good. Yeah. And you'll like this one. Yeah. It's very sad. I mean, a yeah. lot of people love the first one, and then the second one, well, they got like, nah, disappointing. First so one's better. Yes. I need, I, I need, I need to see it for myself. Yeah. But second one's totally worth watching. Yeah. I enjoy both. I, I think the tone's a little different in this one, maybe? Um, the other yeah. one was a darker kind of... This one's a lot lighter. Yeah. It was good. Station Eleven, the uh, R70 says. Mm, I don't know that Station one. Station Eleven is absolutely fantastic. Same mm. girl from... Uh, Halt and Catch Fire. Fire. Oh, the uh, actress in it. She was excellent. Claire! Yay! HBO Max. Station Five. Oh, nice. Pipes yeah. up there. This is so nice. Leo, your backgrounds are fantastic. They are. So, so good. Yeah. What's going on, kitties? Come on in. Come say hi. Come see you. Did they eat all the um, treats? Yeah, the treats are all no, gone now. So don't tomorrow. ring the bell because uh, we have They'll nothing be disappointed. to do. <laughs> have to go to PetSmart on the weekend or something. Keep these kitties. Keep these kitties and treats. Keep Sorry. them happy. Keep them happy. Come here. Oh, <laughs> hi. Hi. He might not like this. You gonna settle? Look at this tail. He's got the tail of a thousand black squirrels. He's <laughs> <It's> so, <laughs> so floofy. Yeah, we went on a walk the other day. Yeah. And saw four squirrels in a row. Four black squirrels. We're reminded of Atari's tail. Or, yeah, Sprite. You Sprite's, Sprite's tail, tail. sorry. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this is got a fluffy, thick black tail. Yeah, that's very cute. <laughs> Or you can get to play any video games this time, you know? No, it's time. okay. I'll do that next time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. It's my my first visit from yes. right. Sunny. <laughs> Gotta take it slow. <laughs> yeah, you should um, definitely come back and play some games. Yeah, for yeah, sure. I should do that. Yeah. Next time I'll plan games that would would work for you. Like they would be good games that you would um, enjoy playing. Enjoy playing. Yeah. Like not too complicated, something that can good introduction. What are you trying to say? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you a really hard one. <laughs> no, no, no. Need do... overlays well, and no, no. multiple <laughs> switches and three joysticks. You'll have to draw a map. We're only giving That's Geo map drawing. Only map drawing. <laughs> uh, Where you have to go in the rooms like, okay, enter here. Okay, next room. And then you draw it all out. <laughs> and I'm like, ah! <laughs> yeah, that's not very fun. No, what kind of genre games do you like to play? Yeah. If um, you were to play a game, would you like a puzzle game, a fighting game? I love fighting games. Yeah. And I love like adventure games, like shooting games, like con, like con, the con, contra, contra, contra. I love shooting I love games, that. like shooters Flying and that kind of thing. Games. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Action. Games. Adventure kind yeah. of games. Yeah. They have to find things and stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, That's how we can. Okay. Games. Yeah. Yeah. We can make that work. Oh, we have a question from oh, uh, V V Co Eight Bits yeah. question. When will Sprite Sprite be changed? changed? <laughs> oh. We need to get one made for Oh, they're him. so cute. I love that fluffy Sprite. But yes, yeah. we... I got the, re the real one. Yeah, yeah we'll get... Because that's not a... That's, that's a different creature. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, that's... He was named after the soot sprites in My Neighbor Totoro. Yeah. Um... By uh, Ghibli Studios. Yeah. And that's excellent kind movie. of excellent if you movie. Seen it. Yeah. So yeah. that's where that sprite comes from. Um, so, but I'll get a proper one made. Yeah. Um, on Fiverr. Go back to the same person. <laughs> yeah. Did, did a great job of, of us, our characters. We don't really use our characters. No, we don't, do we? But. Uh... But sometimes. sometimes. Well, we'll get a sprite. We'll get a little sprite, pixelated fluffy sprite tail. made. Now that he's grown up and we know kind of what he's going to look yes. like with the fluffy tail That's and true. You kind of want to see what kind of cat he's going to be. So. Yeah. Uh, and he's all tail. He's more tail than body. 
<laughs> so whatever his sprite is, the tail gonna is going to be as long as long as he is, right? So, um, uh, and then once we get the sprite sprite, then we'll get all the merch out. That's right. <laughs> the sprite, sprite merch, merch. The sprite, oh. sprite posters. Merch. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, shirts. yeah. And then I'll do my crafting show that uh, right. some people are asking for, and we'll <laughs> we'll make uh, some sprite coasters. How about that? Oh, thank you, guys. People are saying that uh, like thank Atari yeah. 800XL rules uh, did great job, Giovanna. Thank yes. you. Oh, <laughs> and then and then Dan of Dan ABC. Dan ABC. Dan yeah. ABC. Great interview. I like Jill's accent. Oh, so, nice. Sort of Sound like. Italian, sort of. I'm Colombian, South American, but yeah. <laughs> you know? Italian name. Italian name. Italian yeah. name. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Sprite. Sprite Curly Tail. Sprite's yeah. on my desk. Is he? Oh! Get down from there. Get down. Oh! He knows he's doing something wrong. Oh, he knows oh, he's bad. Cats, no. cats always know they're bad. Yeah. Uh, who was the that the person that modded the Atari 5200 again? I'm looking for him on the Atari Age forums. Ivory Tower Collections. He yes. often watches the show. He might even be lurking. Yeah. Working on a system right now, actually. So <laughs> he usually uh, mod systems while he watches the show. So he may uh, just hop in. He has uh, fixed and modded some of my systems. Yes. Uh, he does an amazing job. Very, very clean install. Very well done. So... I highly recommend him um, for uh, modding your systems. Oh, he's found. He's. I'm gonna die because that cat. Don't look, cat. don't don't ignore the cat. No. I'll get him down down, but I don't want to. Ah! My timing's all off because that cat. <laughs> cat, come here. Sorry. And that's exactly why I don't want him. It's water. Everywhere. Sorry, Everywhere. I have to get next to you. And glass, I don't think it broke. It no, no. It did? No. Oh, okay. There's water all over the heater, though. Sorry, let me get a towel. Ah, oh, it got me again. I'm sorry. This is going to be the end. So, B2 call, 8 bit says Colombians have a nice Spanish. Oh. Much better than us Chil Chileans. <laughs> well, we do have a reputation for having, like, really, n they call it, like, kind of neutral Spanish right. compared to, like, a lot of Spanish with a lot of slang and uh, like weird accent. I love, I love ch Chilean's uh, Spanish. I had a really good friend in in Ontario from Chile, and I loved, love her accent. <laughs> but yeah, and it's one hit away from dying because of that cat. <laughs> the cat just blame the cat. Hundred <laughs> percent. So I can't even afford to punch people now. I'm not even gonna. I'm just gonna stay here because yeah, uh, I'll wait. mop up the water when you're done. Wait till it has a go, go, go. Bad sprite. Cat happened. What just happened? Cat happened. Cat happened. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you died. Yep. Oh no. Here, here, towel. So that's I'm all wasted. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no it's, okay. it's not you. Blame this little guy. Look at him. No remorse, none whatsoever. No, he's back. He's, he's back, back at it. He's <laughs> back at it. He doesn't know he's bad. No. He just wants to look around. Oh. He's like, pa -pa -pa it's like I discovered the desk. Pa -pa -pa -pa. Yeah. Oh, it's all over my desk and my mouse. <gasps> oh. Here, grab the towel. Should be fine. Mouse isn't. It is just water. Thankfully, not beer. If it got in my like computer, that. that would be a problem. Yeah, it didn't get in the computer. You can't. You can't attack the cat when he's on the desk. You have to be very <laughs> slow. Do you just say? We talk ocho bits. <laughs> ocho, like eight. Eight bits? Yeah. Oh, nice. We talk ocho bit. Ocho. Numero ocho. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight. Uh, just uh. no necktis, Giovanna. <laughs> what are you saying there? <laughs> Teleprompter 312. <laughs> <laughs> no neckties. Yep. Oh yeah, that's right. It is. That's that's always Colombian neckties. Yeah. Oh, wow, I haven't thought about that in a long time. Yeah. Um. So that's the show. Unfortunately, I didn't make it to the end of that. That uh, was very close, though. It's a very long game, so yeah. it's quite uh quite a marathon to get to it. We'll have to give it another kick another day. Bad cat. Oh, and he, oh. he's just like, Kitty. but I'm so cute. I'm the cutest. And I would like some treats now that your game is over. Yeah. <laughs> Get that South American homebrew doc filmed already. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. That's actually, I'm actually, this, you brought up a really good idea. Yeah. 
because that's like he needs to be convinced because i told him i'm 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 absolutely down to make oh, a song. Oh, she said that, yeah. Like, to write it and just yeah. make it with them. Like, that's what we do. Has to be the right angle on yeah. it. But South American, yeah. Like, stories? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up. We'll think about it. See, yeah. see, see. Mm. Think about it, think about mm. it. <laughs> we'll think about it, yeah. Oh, this was really fun, guys. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. And you'll come back and we'll play actual games. So you'll get, yes. it. get the chance instead of being forced to ask questions. That's right. And then you all can ask me Spanish questions, questions in Spanish. <laughs> That's or right. Anything related Spanish to related Colombia. <laughs> yeah. You can chat with Gio in Spanish and she can pretend like she can um, translate it in English to something that That's sounds right. good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> so thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, coming up on this show, yes. uh, we're going to be doing an Atari 8-bit VBXE U1MB special showing off my new Atari 8-bit system and all the amazing things it can do. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be playing Castlevania, Commando, Quadrilla, and Gakek. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, plus some more sh games that I uh, want to play. Uh, we have Developer Spotlight uh, on Andrew Davey coming up, if you can imagine mm -hmm. that. The, re the recluse uh, that is Andrew Davey. Uh, but he has done speaking before. There's a video of him speaking in front of a crowd, so mm. I didn't know that. So uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, very soon, we're going to be doing the fifth annual Atari Homebrew Awards nominee playthrough. I'm excited That's, for that. Uh, after they're all nominated, narrowed down from the hundreds of games into mm. the top six in each category. That starts um, February, very early February, where we play all through them. And then, of course, the fifth annual Atari Homebrew Awards live presentation, the big event of the year, where we honor all the best games voted on by you, not by me. You're saying they're the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impartial. Um, and we give them awards. Mm -hmm. so that'll be a lot of fun. And that's at the end of February. I believe it's the 26th, if I am not mistaken. No, 25th, if that doesn't change, because that's a Saturday. So the very last Saturday in February. I'll come back to you. Yeah. Oh, they love you. Yeah. Oh, I'll oh. come back. Thank you. All. Oh, oh nice. yeah, I can see my name all over. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my um, my Atari Lynx handheld is redone now. <gasps> We're it's getting it back. Sent. It's going to be in the mail very soon. Oh, sent back awesome. from overseas. Um, so it'll take a couple weeks to get here, and then we can incorporate. Um, some um, Lynx games. Mm -hmm. Probably just in time to play the best of the year, uh, the nominees. So that's a that's a good time to, to bust it out. Uh, then we have Jalaga, which is a Galaga Jaguar game. Um, I don't know when that's going to be because we kind of just did a Champ Games. Um, so that's that's in the future. Might be off, yeah. Yep. Um, and uh, the developer spotlight after that is Chris Walton, but that's well in the future. I like to space those out. Those, those are a lot of work. It's like mm. what Geo did today, except me doing it to somebody else. <laughs> so it's a lot of work coming up with questions and organizing those. Um, yeah, so lots of great uh, shows coming up in the future. How do you stream that? Stream what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, stream him? Uh, he just he's from Australia. He just puts camera in front of him <laughs> in front of himself. Um so thank you for very carefully. <laughs> oh the the links. Well oh, you'll see. Oh yeah. It's yeah, yeah. been heavily modded. Uh it's been consolized, if you can imagine that, mm -hmm. with VGA out and a controller that we can play over here. We are going to have to do another um, Vectrix homebrew day. Oh, definitely. Because yep. that was a lot of fun. It looked great. It yep. worked. So we'll be definitely doing another uh, Vectrex day. I think and so. And going through some more Vectrex homebrew because there's really a lot. Fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you, uh, Cyrano uh, Reboot. Mm -hmm. uh, Jalik is awesome. He confirms. He must have early access to it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yay, Vectrex. Yes. RC70, Atari 800 XL rules, old style. Rendered Ghost, Teleprompter, Charles, Mao. Uh, Charles Whelan, The Toko, uh, Johnny the Whiz Kid, Dan ABC, 8 Bit Poet, Leo C. Santi, thank you thank again you for, for sending watching. Razor's Edge, where you can buy it from Red Button Games mm. directly from them. There's a thread in the Atari Age forums for that. Um, 
Metal Snows. Metal Lunar 7. Thank you, Carl G. Thank you for tuning in and chatting with us. Uh, oh, try to vary between punch and kicks. There we go. Yeah. That's what I learned <laughs> in the end. Yeah. I got there. Lost a couple lives. Uh, Arena Foot. Arena Foot. Steve yes. was back there too. Oh. Carl G. And that's the top. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Lots of chatters today. We wanted to do fun. this show for a long time, interviewing mm -hmm. us, so you can learn a little bit more about us. And if anybody asks questions, I could just point to this episode. Go look at that episode. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we'll be back on Friday with some more games. I don't have anything planned. So it might be some 7,800 games, might be something else, might be Jaguar. Who knows? We'll see. Gracias, Giovanna. Yes. <laughs> de nada. De nada. Vita co ocho beats. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you again on Friday. Mm -hmm. Good night, everybody. Good night. Have Bye. a great week. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>